morning, everybody. Welcome to Barn Burner here on wherever you're uh, taking it in on the YouTube's, on, in your ear holes, on your Spotify, your Apples, or whatever it is. We're uh, we're very happy to have you. Are you a Spotify or an Apple guy? There, uh, you're Spotify, right, Pinder? I love Spotify. Big fan. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Retro? Are you a Spotify or uh, Apple or? Uh... No, I don't have. I'm more Spotify. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. yeah. How about you, yeah. Jack? You're young. You're a young punk. What are I'm you an Apple guy. You're an Apple guy? Mm. Yeah, it's just convenient. Oh, oh he's gone. We lost had him. him. He was there. He was there. Well, he showed up. He can bill for it. Oh, there no, it. he's back. Oh, he's back. oh, 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 right. oh now he muted. He's now he muted. Muted, 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 muted. It seemed like the, the, the camera was uh, blurry. A little blurry. You're looking good, brother. Yeah, I look blurry. Great. Thank you. A little scary today. I was worried we would never oh, then People be very impressed to know the... Pulled technical out of the savvy coming through for old retro there was some yeah. Yeah. The old hard reboot yeah we'll give it the the power cycle yeah power, cycle, the power cycle and then uh and then there you were there you were so here we uh uh here we go i didn't realize there's still hockey being played two games tonight and that's it then we're then tomorrow people. there's games no, I believe tomorrow's when All Star break. Oh, I could be wrong. I thought it was. I it thought tomorrow. there's games tomorrow too. I looked in this the old no. spooky there. It's like you got two games today, and then tomorrow Wednesday, no. Jan thirty one, Ottawa, Detroit, L A, Nashville, San Jose, Anaheim. Am I drunk? There's three games tomorrow. There's Jesus, three games got... tomorrow. Yeah, we got one, two, three. One yesterday. What the two H? Then, three tomorrow. Gary, why are the flames? What's what's like? So all those teams playing this week will come back later after the All Star break. You figure. Yeah, Maybe. that's not. That's got to be getting a little close to the to the. Uh, I mean, it's only a couple days, but it's a couple days closer to the trade. Yeah, deadline. there's no freezes on the roster anyway, so whether you're playing or not, it's like no. I know, I guess, but it's still if you're not playing games and. What are we gonna do for trade deadline day? Uh, we're gonna just simulcast Frank's show, and we can set it. Go yeah. get hammered at the Origin Tap Room, and then get a limousine and drive around town and yell at people. Well, that's uh, what I was thinking. If ever there was a chance or a, a, a reason wait. to have another drinky show, it would yes. be the day when potentially all these flames, and then you'd have some real, real drunken honesty coming I out from all of it. What they got a first from Marky? <laughs> if it's night, we should set up outside the dome, just in the parking lot, and just get <laughs> the tent right, and start drinking. Have security right ask us. And invite everyone down. It's a walk. Yeah, party. and just screaming and at Conroy. Conroy walks out of the dome. <laughs> you shut up, you! That's all you could get. A third for ten of <laughs> the third round pick. Pack your shit. <laughs> I, I was thinking we should we should do something where we get right liquor or do something on uh, trade deadline day because you saw Frank's board yesterday. Three of the top five potential guys are flames. Yep. We got to do something for it. Well, and we got a lot more in the Pinder report. Elliot Friedman was going bananas yesterday on Calgary Flame stuff. He was on uh, Donnie and Dolly in Vancouver. He was on NHL Network in New York City. And the Flames are front and center. We're starting to hear. We're, we're into that window where now it's not just, yeah, they're hoping to get you know the market to hit. Now we're actually hearing teams. We're talking about GMs that are calling. We're hearing of potential landing places for some of these guys, where the the, the no way no moves might be used. It's we're, we're getting there, guys. We're close. Gosh. My heart's all a flutter. Oh, I know. It's six weeks of this, though, Dean. I don't want you to. Oh man, this. I'm very excited. Looking good in the shirt there, uh, Retro. Somebody was saying uh, in the in the chat there, sweet shirt. Those are sweet shirts. I like. They're sweet. I like. We gotta get some merch going. That's a that's our uh, yeah. February resolution. Well, it's been a year of saying the same stuff. No, but it's thing. been a busy January to be fair. We had the, we had the trip. We had the Jasper. Now we got the Toronto, and we've just announced uh, the end of Feb big event, the Bolarama. And so it's like, okay, we got some stuff going on, but merch is something we got to line up here. I actually have maybe potentially a surprise for all of you when it, in terms of merch. I've been working with Maddie behind the scenes. Oh, really? Because Rhett's been working behind the scenes with the shoveler too. On a couple ideas for. Uh, you know, for that's a merch. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. ideas. What we're all so good at. An idea guy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an idea guy. We need uh, an execution guy. Does anyone have one of those? A witch, an execute. No, just, yeah, not an executioner, just someone to follow through on our ideas. Yeah. Well, sometimes you wonder if you could just put out of misery. It'd be fine. nice to know a guy. I don't want to use him. live in Canada. Right. Oh. Um, no, we don't need a barn burner thong. Oh, oh Jesus. You were floating some calendar shoot. That's a horrible idea. <laughs> I don't want to see your barrel, Dino. I don't need you in short shorts, okay? 
What if no. I uh, no? What if there was some waxing? Yeah, and some, some spray maintenance. tanning or something. If landscaping, we... yeah, you landscape all you want. You're not waxing away the barrel. I don't think. Well, <laughs> and look, maybe that's somebody's flavor. That's fine. I think Dad bod, Arnberg. they're in. That's what I keep telling myself. <laughs> Why do you think? Oh, he this never is cool. Leaves the house. He's got that OnlyFans account. Dad bod. Yeah. Why do Why do I see Dad bod? <laughs> uh, it's, now here's the thing. Little update for you. Uh, for regular viewers and listeners, no show no. tomorrow uh, oh. as it stands. We are going to be en route traveling to uh, the big. I could smoke. do it. Have at her, buddy. You could do it. Yep. Good. There'll be a show tomorrow. Rats host. Could. Yeah. Um, Pinder and I are flying out tomorrow to Toronto. There is a uh, a big whoop de doo in Toronto. Apparently, it's the All Star Game or something. Lots going on. So we're going to be doing shows from Toronto Thursday, Friday, and of course Friday. It's Hawaiian shirt day. Can you, do you need me to bring it? What are we? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I guess he's come on. He's got his Robert Graham's out. He'll be he rocking. Does. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Shirts on. Yeah. I'm not sure what to do. I'm already got the mullet. Do I lean into this thing or try to have like normal people clothes with the mullet? I'm really in no man's land here. Well, it's like, right? So, yes, what are we going to pretend we're something we're not? You've yes, done I think nothing. we just show up as we are. You've done nothing but into, uh, increase my anxiety. You sent me a text about this function thing that's going yeah, on. Convention, a lot yeah. of people in suits and ties, and I'm out of my comfort zone here. No, you know what it is? We're going to go in there like this, and that's yeah. what's going to be great. I think so. Oh, look at all these shirts and ties. And we'll get up there and just start farting and doing what we do. Be like, if <laughs> no, you would like uh, to sponsor Barn Burger, then uh, if you'd like <laughs> some of this in your life, attach your brand, your branding to this, then by all means. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, it's there's lots going on, but I'm gosh. I can just imagine you, someone walking down the hallway of this fancy hotel. We're going to be broadcasting now. Uh, now, Jimothy, uh, what you're seeing in the sports marketing world these days is uh, listeners are moving over to podcasts and the wonderful bond between listeners and podcasts. Now, here's uh, this is uh, called Barn Burner. They're in Calgary, and you're like, <laughs> just, so I couldn't flush my toilet the size of that turd. We nearly flooded the house. Like, oh boy, this is not going to go. I don't need to sponsor the other part. My pants last night. The other thing is, if they've done research, they've looked into what we're up to, and they've <laughs> got us so. in the they've got us in the broom closet, <laughs> or, or it's near the kitchen. Yeah, that's yeah. the um, uh, You know, they're getting uh, that's that's quite a lot of downloads, uh, page views, clip views. Uh, there's a lot of impressions. This show in in Calgary, this is, is actually doing very good. All right. How big is my bag right now? <laughs> Let's man get the tape measure. Do the, the 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 circumference of my scrotum. I feel it's like it's getting bigger. Pull it out. Pull it out. It's wrinkled. <laughs> I didn't shave it for nothing. Measure it. Let's go. Okay, that's why uh, I can see why this show is so popular. Bit ahead of its time, maybe. Yeah. There's all the number. Why it's getting all these numbers? Yeah. So anyway, uh, tomorrow no show. Thursday, Friday from Toronto. The, now you're probably saying to yourself, "Well, geez, tomorrow we get that's Noodles Day. That's oh, Jamie McLennan Wednesday. Can't lose Noodles. Noodles going to join us momentarily, oh, moving them up a day because you can't go a week without Noodles. You can't go a week without Noodles. I don't, and I don't recommend that for anybody. You don't do it. We were because here's the thing: we can maybe bring him on, but there's a time change and stuff, and he's apparently got some afternoon show that he does. So rather than a big deal show or something. Does he go to this just, stuff? Was that? He's so big that he just. He's a big deal, Rhett. He is a big deal. Yeah, he's a big deal. And in fact, joins us one day early on the Insider Hotline, a presentation of TELUS. Entered to win one of six monthly prizes, including tickets to Calgary hockey games, awesome tech like AirPods, Apple Watches, and more. No purchase necessary. All you have to do is fill out a quick survey to enter. So for your chance to win, just go online. Tell us.com slash flames contest. Yes, on a Tuesday. What? Jamie McLennan. What a treat. What a treat. There he is. How are we doing, buddy? Good. On my way up to the casino. So it's all good. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say uh, double down, split the eights, all that sort of thing. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm I just uh got a late start. Had uh kid duty this morning, a little bit of doctor stuff, and then uh ready to rock and talk some hockey. Although it's weird, like I don't know how you guys feel. This week is like to me, it's nonsense because there's mm. there's teams that are playing that you're like, okay, I get it. No Canadian teams. I, I mean, Ottawa played last night. They play tomorrow. But outside of that, it's like 
there's too many teams on breaks that we're interested in. And I'd like yeah. to talk about them daily. And now you're got, Oh, they got a week off. They got nine days off and we'll see if they come back and put on, uh, you know, 11 pounds like we used to do in these uh, breaks. Uh, retro. And then- some of those, you know, there are bad teammates out there. They think it's funny. <laughs> they try, they volunteer mandatory weigh-ins to the coach and it's a real, ha, 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 ha. who would do kiss- such a thing? Who That's what it that? is. It's the ass kissers going, I worked out when I was off and take a look at me. Now I did in the Olympic break. I do remember I went to Vegas and I worked out to the point where I ran into the Edmonton Oilers brass down there. I think it was Ronnie Lowe and, and Mac T and all those guys. And I ended up, when I got back, I was with St. Louis. Fierzy got hurt, so I had to play, and I ran into one of them when we were playing the Oilers. It's like, lucky you got that bike ride in when you're in Vegas, hung over. I'm like, yeah, I, yeah. I guess I did, but you know what? It it uh, these guys are in such great shape now. I just wish we had hockey, like more of it. I heard a guy, a buddy of mine, tell me about a guy that asked his assistant coach if he'd skate him during the week off. Yeah, that's that's heroic. It's actually is that, heroic. that's embarrassing. And, 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 and I wonder, like, it, it's all about science now, right? Yeah, like they're actually dialed in on this, and they're all blah 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 bullshit. But there's got to be a some part of the science that says get your just go put your yeah, beach rest. towel down and get your ass them. on a beach. Exactly. Yeah. You know what though? Like that's the guy, in, and I don't want to you know, I guess stereotype, but that's the guy who's got an apple for the doctor or the teacher. That's the guy who's got like, you know, the, the, he's an ass kiss. Mm-hmm. And, and you know mm-hmm. what? I don't like that. Like eventually that guy will get weeded out when, when push comes to shove. <laughs> I don't know who it is. Unless it was McDavid, then it's ridiculous. But well, it's I was like, going to see, did you see on social media what he's doing? There's all these guys who are down in Punta Cana and Turks and Caicos. He's in the North somewhere. He, way up north, he was chipping. He had an axe and he was chipping uh, a hole in the ice and then doing ice baths. He had a part on. Yeah. Wow. What See, a guy. I, don't, I don't know why. I, I guess this is this is me because I'm an old man, but it's like everyone, like I see nowadays, it's like uh, this kid, the, the pitcher for the Blue Jays, who was a mess last year. They sent him and he was Manoa. Like, what was it? Manoa. He was practicing in like a, a shack in Florida for like a month or something. Like they sent him down to a league that was like a the California Panel League or something. <laughs> he comes back up, they 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 end up rinsing him. Now it's on his uh, Instagram, like, oh look at me, I'm working out. Like you got to, sh- like yes, you don't get a an extra clap from us because you're doing what you're supposed to do as an athlete, and that's being in shape and working out. Like you don't. You shouldn't get it. And now you see guys like, oh, hitting the gym, like, oh, doing this and that. Yeah, that's your job. You, every two weeks, you get a boatload of money. So do your job. Like, work out, stay in shape, and don't come back uh, skating around like you're dragging a piano. That's the Rhett, way I would say. Rep never subscribed to that theory. Just give me the, the big lo- lo- I cash every two weeks. I didn't falter and fail when I was fat. I picked up the pace. I was good one at speed, it. and it was, yeah. it was very steady. That's the thing. And he could do it whether it's two, 240 or 208 because I've seen him at both. Hungover and or sober. Same, same. 240, you, you know what? You can still can open forwards whether Jeez. you're 240 <laughs> or, or, or you're 208. The difference is you could get there a little faster. You know, I've had many a game or situation during a season where I felt like perhaps my conditioning had faltered to a certain extent. And I said, I'm going to pick it up. And I went out, and I had one f of a game. I dominated, and I said, "No, I don't need to. No. I'm in great. I'm doing what I got to do. I'm yes. wrong again." <laughs> you know what? In our minds, it's all it is. As long as we feel good, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter Confidence, what scale baby. says. Whatever. It's it's all about how we play, and and that's the one thing I swear to God, it is the truth. It doesn't matter where you are, and especially I'll just talk about hockey. But if you're playing well, nobody bothers you. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You could be, you could eat yourself almost out of the league. The minute that you don't play well, oh, let's take go step on the scale. Let's take a look at your diet. Let's take a look at how much you're drinking or whatever. Mm-hmm. Playing well cures everything. You just lift up the carpet and stuff it underneath and go, doesn't matter. We'll make excuses for that guy because yeah. he's so damn good. And believe me, there is, you know, enough evidence. 
I played with a guy, a goaltender who didn't, he can do whatever the hell he wanted because he played 70 games a year and one yeah. was the best on the planet. Hmm. Nobody bothered him about, hey, get on the bike. Let's see what you weigh. Let's see what you're doing. Like, go out and stop, you know, pucks every night. And he did it. So, you know, he's the, uh, the anti-science group, we'll call him. I didn't know Manny Fernandez ever started 70 games a year. That's <laughs> oh, interesting. A lot for yeah. Manny. I thought Rollison yeah, was eating half those. But you know, I, and you know, it, not to, this is not to, to, to throw a guy under the bus, but Dustin Bufflin was that guy. I was in Brandon when he was playing for the Wee Kings, and this guy, if we could just get him in shape, if we could just get a hold of his fitness, he'd be so great. And he was dominant, obviously, in dominant. junior. And then he continues to play. And there was there was that tipping point where I've got to get him in shape. Well, you can't be a forward, so he's gonna have to be a D. And then he's just like, you know what? Dominant you're kind thing. of uh you're kind of elite. You're really good. Fuck it. Just go out yeah. and play. Right, and huh? <laughs> you know, and and he was. I I, I don't know. We we talked about it back in the would he be better or worse if you started to mess around with his cardio and his diet and everything? Just, just go play. I, I think he'd get hurt. I think yeah. he, what would happen is there are guys who, you know, the joke in Toronto, Phil Castle, and you know that, you know, the alleged hot dog thing and all that. You know what Phil did? He just played a thousand games in a row, like yeah. you know, like, and where there are other guys who are just chiseled and they pull a muscle trying to, you know, reach for a puck in the corner. Where Phil just goes, I'll play 82, 10 Three years cuts. in a row, 12 years in a row, 15 years in a row. Where, you know, other guys, I, I feel like you try to get them into, you try to make them something they're not, and then they end up becoming something they're not, which is not productive. It's counterproductive. Brett, you were going to say something there. Yeah, you well, were. I just, you go back to, I still remember, and I say it all the time, and it's a different era, but there's there's still truth to it. We would go to Pittsburgh. When I was in Florida as a kid and we had an old team and we had lots of fun and we went for lunches all the time and it was old school hockey. But when we went to the rink, we'd had had a morning skate. It was a morning skate like you. All right, let's go. And you'd go to Pittsburgh and Mario and Yags and Francis and they'd be out there with one skate on if they went out there, maybe a smoke, you know, <laughs> like it, it was it was so laid back. It was like, wow. Like, look at these guys. Like, yeah. they don't care about anything. And they dominate. Now, it's yeah, Mario, back back. it's Yager, it's some of the best players ever. But it was a trickle down through the whole team. There is a, there's an aspect of the game that people know about but don't talk about because it's impossible to do, and it's the mental aspect. Right. If you're fresh in your head and you're excited and you're at the rink and you feel good about yourself and about your team and you're, your ability, you're going to play better than the guy that worked out and had a loaf of broccoli for breakfast. Yes. Right? Like, he's in his own head, yeah. <laughs> and you can overstress the nervous system mentally. And then you, you know, oh, what did I eat? I didn't get enough sleep. Uh-uh. Don't care. I'm going to go to the rink. Love seeing you, boys. Let's go out there, kick some ass, have some fun. And you play better there. They're, you can't underestimate. And I don't know how, again, with science, you can go, well, if he's 8% body fat or this or that, or hey, this, like they wear freaking. Uh, Heart rate monitors. Yeah, it, practice. I yes. know they are. I, I talked to an NHL coach where I didn't know about this is the coaches will get a data report yeah. from practice going, this guy's heart rate was, you know, didn't never hit its peak. This guy, and, and he would go, yeah, that makes sense. He was cheating on every drill. And then, you know, this guy, uh, they tracked the speed. I didn't, I don't know if they have like it's in the monitor or if it's in their jersey or whatever, but yeah, this guy's our fastest skater consistently in practice. Watch him. Like it was interesting to hear because you talk about certain players. And so if I'm doing my pregame media or whatever, I get a, uh, you know, you get a little sit down with the, the opposing coach sometimes. So you're talking about a player. Geez, I like that guy. And they're like, you know what? I, I like him. Uh, he's better than you think. Or you know what? He needs a little bit of a cattle prod because he's lazy in practice. Like he'll, he'll, he'll give you a little bit of a nugget. But nowadays, it's almost like anything. There's no hiding. There's camera mm -hmm. phones. There's technology, everything. Like I, you know, I can't imagine some of the practices that I was involved in. You know, there, there, there wasn't high speed. There was more like, hey, let's get through. Let's do what we need to. There were times where if we had a big night on a Saturday and we didn't play again till Thursday, that Monday practice, it would have been tough. 
but it was not turn your brain off and work hard tough, but it was the, the, the coach was going to get some booze out of you. The coach was going to get like, you were going to get a hard skate at the end. You, and, and all of us knew it like, okay, we're going to go and we're going to work our ass off today because you work hard, you play hard, you do all these things. Nowadays though, I wonder, you know, like McDavid, you're right. That's a nice ice bath. It's, it's taking care of his body. His body is a fine tuned machine. Now he's not, you know, he doesn't, he's not super shredded, but he's very lean and he's very strong. And, you know, I, I look at now guys that are, that carry, we'll call it a little bit extra weight. They're known as like kind of bigger slug guys. You you see now the NHL guys, they're all like, like tall, skinny, really lean. Like they don't carry. Greyhounds. Yeah, they're greyhounds. They don't, and because the game is speed, right? But if, mm-hmm. you know, the, like Drew Doughty, I, I think Drew Doughty just does what he needs to do to be an elite defenseman. And he's a bit of a throwback, which I respect the hell out of. I love the guy. He's the greatest. He might be the greatest quote, quote in the NHL in the last like 10, 12 years because this guy just speaks his mind. And I respect that. But I, I think there's a level where Drew knows what he needs to get at. And then outside of that, hey, I'm, I'm fine. So everyone's different. Uh, Noodles, we, uh, you probably, I think it was a sports night game, not TSN. So you didn't do the Sens game last night. Is that right? Right. Um, they were down three nothing. They stormed back. They win in overtime. They've been connected to Chris Tanev, which would make a lot of sense to me on July first. It makes no sense to me as we approach the March deadline. What can you sort of walk us through that situation? Because there's, there's more than one spot where they're saying Ottawa really likes Tanev. They want good pros, and he is a right shot guy, which they need. Which are, okay, so I did a I did the Jay Onright show last night, and I did Sports Center, and they both asked me this particular question. There was two questions. First and foremost, if Jacques Martin moves on, who would be the, the, the fit for the coach? So I said Craig Berube went into my um, you know, explanation for that. Then secondly, they said, if you had to tinker, what would you be doing with the Ottawa roster? And I said two things. If you take a look, they've got too many left-shot defensemen. And, and a lot of them are good. They're good players. You've got Shabbat. You've got Jake Sanderson, you've got Jacob Chikrin, you got Eric Branstrom, and they've got a, a kid in the minors named Tyler Clevin, who at, at worst is going to be a third pairing kind of long Christian Soucy type of like mean hits, physical, advances the puck, you know, that type of player. So that's all on the left side. The right side, they've got Artem Zub, who's really stable. Um, they've got a kid named Jacob Bernard Docker, who's a Calgary kid, mm-hmm. uh, played college, but he's 23-24. He's going to climb up. They need a right shot defenseman who can push into that, maybe push Bernard Docker down while he develops. And and that's what makes sense. A guy like Chris Tanev, who also is going to kill the second bird with the stone here, is because I said they need veteran guys on on that roster that are a lot like Claude Giroux, that are good players still, that contribute on the ice, but are leaders and showing the young players to how to be pros and how to grow because we forget Tim Stussler just turned 22. Ridley Gregg is 21. Josh Norris is 24. Uh, Brady Kachuk is 24. Um, you go Drake Batherson just turned 25. So uh, Jake Sanderson's 21. Bernard Docker's 23. Like they need uh, Brandstrom 23. Same situation. They need veteran guys who can contribute, not just say, Hey, this is what you need to do. Or when I play, this is what you need to do. They have to be uh, productive players. So Chris Tanev makes a hundred percent sense for the fit on the right side and the leadership uh, situation. So that would kill two birds with one stone. And I would argue if he's available now, maybe that's why you do it, but you make sure there's an extension in place because it's a bigger picture uh, move. Right, yeah, because to me, it would be like, why would you give up assets when you get them for free July 1? Like, why yeah. throw the picks or prospects to Calgary when – but you're saying get them in, let them see what's happening in the organization, ink an extension, and now you got your guy. Well, and I think that's – it's almost uh, – if you're going to be acquiring him, you're talking to his agent saying, hey, we're in on you. Would you be interested in an extension? What does that look like? Because you don't trade for him unless you have something in place. Yeah, and Flames would have to allow that, correct? They'd have to say it's okay I, to I talk to the player, or unless it's almost like the Matthew Kachuk, but a lot of different, lot different numbers. But it'd be like yeah. you sign him and you trade him to us, or vice versa. It's the trade and extension type of thing. Sure. But he would be. It's funny. 
you know, I feel like I'm on top of things. I missed that one. I haven't seen him uh, connected to Ottawa, but now that you mention it, I think he would be an unbelievable fit just based on their needs, um, both leadership wise and that right, right side. See, I, we were going to talk about hockey. Now I feel like we're going to derail it, but I, I want to get to it here. Uh, I have questions. I have questions for you, Jamie. Okay. James. Um, I saw, James, I saw this uh, the other day. Uh, I don't know what kind of uh, explanation there is, but if we could just show this now, uh, I'm, I'm wondering what uh, what it is we're looking at here. This is dramatic. I showed this oh, here. <laughs> First of all, I remember this exact like moment that this picture was taken. Um, my dad. <laughs> that is perfect. You know, For that. those that are not that aren't watching, this is a young Jamie McLennan. Yes. who has a Pinterest kind of a Hawaiian party shirt. Yes, but it is it is undone to a, it's got to be about just above the navel because we've got a lot of, of bare uh -huh. chest. Yeah, and then a chain hanging over the bare chest. We've got some long flowing locks, and we've got the great noodle smile. Um, so uh, again, sorry to interrupt, but what is happening here? So when my I remember this exact moment. This is my grade ten picture. In Lethbridge, Alberta, the LCI, wow. so Lethbridge Collegiate Institute, LCI was the name of the high school. So the weirdest part is I had come, my dad's company helped build the hospital in Lethbridge. So we moved to Lethbridge as a family for one year when I played bantam hockey. And that summer I moved there with the fa my family. My dad moved us July 1st. So I had no summer with friends or anything. I started working at McDonald's. I chipped away at that. I, and once I turned 16, I started delivering pizza. I have a crazy, remind me at some point, I can tell you this crazy delivering pizza story, which is unbelievable. Because <laughs> I just moved to Lethbridge and I didn't know where I was going. And back then there's no cell phones with GPS. It's just like, hey, figure it out where I'm going on a map. So anyways, I'm going to high school that year, grade 10. And when you register, they take your yearbook picture right then. So that was in like late August. It's a thousand degrees out. I show up in my best shirt, but it's, a, you know, it's so hot. And for some reason, I don't know why I had it like, but I'm like, I think I might've had it open and it just kind of closed it a little bit for the picture. And I don't wear jewelry anymore. I haven't worn jewelry in years, but I remember my mom had given me like, a, I think it was like St. Christopher. I, I think that's what that like, that medallion is or whatever that thing is around my neck. So it's awkward. There's no defending it. I'm very happy there. I, You're so I, happy. You can yeah, see he's it. jacked. And I promise you, I never tried drugs or anything until <laughs> I so Until you met Rat probably, yeah, okay. I was not stoned or anything in that picture. I was just very happy. I don't know why, because I had no friends, and that was my first day of school. So – that was uh, Lethbridge, Alberta, when in about 1986. That's very much Karate Kid era. And I was like, ever. did you get abused? Like, were you getting beat up? Did you have to go to the sensei and get some? I, there was a few moments because I, I'll, I'll tell you another story. That first year, I've always been a worker. So I got a job scraping plates at the cafeteria at lunch hour. So can you imagine like you're... <laughs> I'm new in the high school. I don't know anybody. So I take the job at the cafeteria just between 11 and one. I had a spare or something. So for two hours a day, I, all the kids would be in there. I would take their plates from the, the fries and the gravy and I would scrape them. Like I would clean up the tables. Like I was, and it's, you know, grade 10 fast forward two years later, I'm playing for the Lethbridge hurricanes and they're starting goaltender. And I remember one person saying like, did you used to work at the cafeteria? And I'm like, yeah, I did. Like, because I, no shame. It didn't matter to me. I just, I took a job and, but I used to scrape plates. And can you imagine a grade 10 nerd like me where you walk up to the cool table and they're like, Hey, you missed a spot or Hey, you're, you know, you dropped some fries on the floor or Mr. Me, or what was it? Ralph Macchio. Yeah. What was his name in, yeah. in the, Show. Danielson. I was Danielson. Danielson. Yeah. That's so, right. Anyways. So that was my grade 10 experience. So it might've stemmed from day one, me wearing that shirt, 
I didn't get my ass kicked, but I'm sure there's a few times I, I might have or might like was close to. But then I became a good hockey player for that band of AAA team and nobody messed with me. And a couple of years later, I was playing in the WHL. That's right. So, yeah. Wax on, wax off now, huh? Who's yeah, who's got the punchlines now? Yeah. I was doing it. I was, I, I didn't see, I didn't even like a girl back then and, and could wear like the shower like the, wasn't it the shower costume he had for the Halloween? Yeah, you pulled her into the shower, the fake shower. It's pretty cool. So, <laughs> see, I thought there, it, there had to be something, and in in the end, there's nothing. The smile, the shirt. I thought this is, hey, I'm going to wear something for school pictures. I bet you wouldn't. I thought well, there had to be a bear or something. His mom set that out for him the night before. He was. Yeah, exactly. It's just noodles like, being noodles. That's, my that's best good. Shirt. I can't imagine what I was wearing. I just. The, the lack of chest hair, the, the lack that I, I don't know why, the lack of awareness to why is my tarp open. First hey, thing. confidence. You had confidence. That's, you got to have confidence. I don't know. I think that's oblivious. Like, I'm oblivious. Like, when, when you're ignorant to the situation where ignorance is bliss, that was me. Like, I just, hey, I'm cool. Look at me. I got my shirt open. Which no everybody, denying it. Yeah. So, I was very ignorant back then, I guess. Not arrogant, ignorant. So what was the connection to food? Like, I feel like you should be 300 pounds. We're delivering pizzas. We're working at McDonald's. We're scraping fries and gravy. You're probably saying, hey, that, they barely even touch that. I'll take that I'm going to tell you, I, do we have time? I'll tell this quick Shouldn't pizza you? delivery story. So so I get, here's, here's you want to talk about Alberta back in the 80s. I've been driving since I was 12. Like my dad, we, we you know, you drive, you drive in the rural areas and stuff like that. Like dad would throw you the keys. He'd be like, we used to own a plane. And our like a, a, hot, a Cessna Hawker uh, 182XP, and it flipped one time in the weather. So my dad had to fly it from one airport to the other. I was 12 years old. We, I drop him off. He goes, pick me up at the Villeneuve airport. I'm like driving the back roads, like 12. Okay, so I had been driving for a long time. When I was 14, you could drive with an adult. Well, I have older brothers. So two two o'clock in the morning, you know, my brothers would call from the bar. Dad would throw me the keys and go, go pick up your brothers. So I, I drive, <laughs> you're driving, you know, and, and I have to drive them through McDonald's everywhere. You name it. 2.30 in the morning. They're 19, 20 years old. I'm 15 and I'm driving them around. So whatever. I've been driving for a long time uh, to the point where, like, when, even when I got my license, my mom just threw me the keys and goes, go get your driver's license. I said, OK, I went down, got it. So I get a job the next day delivering pizzas because I got my license like legally. And I think it was at a place called Baco Pizza, B-A-A-C-O, Baco Pizza in Lethbridge. And my first day in the job, they're like, okay, take these 12 pizzas to this house. So they give me the address. And I, I said to the guy like, okay, I don't know where I'm going. Here's a map. I can't find this house. I'm driving around the neighborhood, driving around the neighborhood. Again, no cell phones, no GPS. I pull around the corner and I pull this house and it's all these Harleys out front, like all parked. And I'm like pulling up to like a Hells Angel or like a gang member's house. And it's like 90 minutes. And back then it's supposed to be, you know, like guaranteed within 30 or you get them free. So I'm, I'm running up. I'm almost crying because I'm like, I'm so rattled. I go up to the door. The door flies open. There's this monster standing there. And apparently, I didn't know this. He had called and had a fight with my manager. And my manager told him to F off. Oh. <laughs> so I get there, the sacrificial lamb. And I'm standing there with like 12 pizzas. <laughs> 90 minutes later, door flies open, and I'm like, hey, sorry, I'm running late here. I go, what do you want me to do with these pizzas? And he goes, I'll tell you what I'm going to do with you. He goes, I'm going to bend you over, and I'm going to stuff them up your ass. And I was like, yeah, I don't – I go, here, you can have them. You can have them. So I just give it to him, and I run away and drive back, drive back to the pizza place. And I get there, and the manager's like, you didn't deliver those, deliver those pizzas to those idiots, did you? And I go – yeah, the guy physically threatened me. And the, 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 my manager's like, yeah, well, I told him to F off. Like, you, you know, you didn't have to give him to him. I'm like, you didn't see his face. So, <laughs> I did have to give it to him. <laughs> I quit right there. I was like, I, I can't, I can't do this. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not going to like, I'm not fear, you know, fighting my way out of a hell's angels den or whatever, just for 12 pizzas. Like you, you can have them. So that I, that, 
my pizza delivering days lasted one day because I was like, I'm out. And I didn't know where the hell I was going anyway. So Yeah, I'll tell you what I'm going to do with these pizzas. Oh, here's your pizza, sir. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Let's see that picture again. Let's bring that picture up one more time. This guy shows up at that the Hells me. Angels. <laughs> me. Hi, here's your pizzas. Here's your pizzas. Like, all happy. Just no, I don't really want them up my ass, sir. Yeah. Gee exactly. golly, mister, I couldn't find this place. That's a tough location. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like telling you, I was so rattled. I remember because I was supposed to work till like 1 a.m. and I got home at like 10 or whatever. My mom's like, what happened? I'm like, you don't want to know. <laughs> you got older brothers. That's amazing. I, you see, you you immediately saw the, the the value in having some heavies around right there. You learned you needed why you need a, an Oliwa, why you want a Chris Simon. Like right there, oh, you learned it. That's beautiful. Exactly. But I, I feel like those guys would have been behind the door on the other side, the guys that I worked with. So <laughs> you never know. But it was that that's kind of like. That picture goes hand in hand with some of the weirdest things that happened to me when I was, you know, living in Lethbridge for a year, which was great. I, I still have a lot of friends there and family and stuff, but uh, that picture brings back a lot of memories. Who was the best muscle, the best tough guy you played with? Ooh, Tony Twist. Ooh, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, our buddy Christoph Olawa loved it. Like, I'd never seen a guy enjoy it. Because Twister, I think, just knew how scary he was and how tough he was. And and Twister, to this day, I would be afraid of him if he walked in my house. Like, he, you know, Twister's this intimidating, you know, mountain of a man. He's only six feet tall, but back then he was six feet, 250. And Jeez. just a monster. And he hit to hurt, right? Like, it wasn't just a, you know, hey, let's square off. Like, he was, he was injuring people. I think... Did he not? I think he broke Rob Ray's orbitable. Yeah, he smashed Ray. And it was funny because th before the game, everyone was asking, hey, I wasn't there yet, but I've heard the story enough where it's like, Razor, like, you're going to fight this guy? He's the, and Razor's like, well, what am I supposed to be afraid of him? Yeah. And then, <laughs> bam. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Razor said yeah. he got in a box and his face just started to melt and grow and just. <laughs> yeah, it's so upsetting. Like, you know what? I, I would say he was hands down the toughest that I played. Now we had a tough team in St. Louis. The joke was it was called the race for chase because Kelly chase was the third toughest guy on our team. And if we played against another team, <laughs> those tough guys would be racing to fight chaser because they didn't want to fight twister or Rudy post check, Rudy, Rudy pot, -check, pot. Yeah. the Rudy pot, the pot. baker. <laughs> Yeah, Rudy made pie. So he would make pie. So we called him Rudy Pot Pie. But Rudy, I'll never forget this sitting on the bench one time in St. Louis, and Rudy fought Jeff Audgers. Now, though, and those two had leather faces. They did. It was literally a punch in the face contest, and neither one of them spit an ounce of blood out. Like it was just like like punching a leather couch, both of them. And it was an un like all you could hear is that sound. Like you could hear that sound. And I was like, this is ridiculous. And Rudy, Rudy was sat a couple seats down from me. Twister was sat beside me and Rudy was down. And I, his, like after the game, his like face was kind of like his, it was kind of swollen around his eyes. And I'm like, how you doing, Rudy? He goes, it doesn't hurt. I'm like, damn, it looks like it hurts. Like you are so tough. I loved Rudy, but like we, I would say that Twister, like I played with a lot of tough guys, but like I would say Twister was the, you know, number one guy. And I think for a while there, he was known as like the, the he guy. He was scary yeah, because he would hurt you. It, like I remember Twister. He had that goatee on and he was so light skinned outside of the dark goatee. And you watch his fights and it looks like his facial expression never changed. It was just, well, he just would come stoic in, and just pom. He pom. would come in and you know, have the lineup on the board and he would like lean over to me noodles. And he's like, who am I beating up today? Like he would like, you know, he would, in. But you could see – now, I, I would say this. There were certain guys – when we were playing certain teams, he, he wasn't like – like he was dialed in. If we were playing Detroit and Joey Kosher on the other side, yeah. you know, Bobby Probert, uh, Sandy McCarthy was yes. sneaky, scary, scary tough. Like those guys got other guys' attention. So I would remember seeing – like I would always – I was a big – observation guy i'd always like to see guys how they reacted before the game and if, if i knew twister was like 
you know, dialed in that night and we were fight. he would have to fight somebody on the other side that was a monster. Like he wouldn't be as loosey goosey. You could tell that he, he was getting it around his head. Like, Hey, I'm, I'm going to have to go at it here. And, and he would always have great fights. Like he was, and back then, you know, Jersey, he would wear this giant goalie cut Jersey and, and they would just swing away. Like I, it feels like another lifetime because we see fights now um, where you're like, it's kind of, they're an outlier. And I think maybe 10 years from now, 20 years from now, like they might just be out of the game. Like, you know, like, I, I don't know, but back then there was two or three, like, pretty serious fights at night where you're well like, you had rudy the yeah. chaser twister mark jansen's was tough was wasn't he there for a while too? no janner wasn't there but i i know oh, him very well. hartford we, that's right Let's yeah we it. had uh we had uh like guys who could fight mark bergevin was a monster like bergie was big and could fight uh pronger was an animal yes. like he'd chop your arm off and he'd fight you like he was you know so we had guys that we had this like team toughness where, it, you know, we had like middleweight type of guys too, where there was like the heavyweights and then we had guys who could handle themselves. And it, it felt like, like, I remember my first game it, pro outside the NHL, we were playing, I was playing for the Capital District Islanders. So it was the Islanders farm team and we played the Binghamton Rangers. They had 10 tough guys and 10 skilled guys. And same with us. Like we had Graham Towns and Dean Ewan. We had a guy named Rick Hayward. This Rick Hayward, a guy went wide on him. Instead of him just trying to catch him, he just broke a stick over the guy's back. It was like a. <laughs> it's like slap shot. It was something like slap shot. And I loved Rick. Rick was so funny, but it was just like, these guys were another level of toughness. So you had like, I remember thinking, looking at that Binghamton, Binghamton team. And it was like, Ty Domi, this guy, Peter Fiorentino, like all of these lunatics that ended up like that ended up either playing in the NHL who were tough guys or they were career minor leaguers that were even bigger monsters. And and then they had these tiny little players like Donnie Biggs flying around. And like so they had Corey Millen, a guy who was just unbelievable players. But then they had these monsters. So it was like, you know, 10 tough guys, 10 skilled guys. And if the game got three one either way, it was like, OK, like this could get ugly tonight. So, you know, that's uh, the game has cha certainly changed. Like that St. Louis team was Kachuk there as well. At that well, time? Walt, Walt was a year after okay. me. Okay. So. Cause there were guys like him and Shanahan. There were some guys Our that were yeah. 40 goal guys and would beat the, the lights out on you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, what's like, we watched him up close and personal for many years. Like Iggy was the, Iggy was that guy sure. like yeah. Iggy. You know, if Iggy wasn't going, he almost welcomed a fight to get him going or get something going. Like, you know, and he, it was funny. Like, do you remember the, I think it was near the end of his career where he, he broke his finger. Was that on Kessler's uh, um, visor? He was okay. chasing Ryan Kessler around and they squared off and Iggy's finger got caught in the visor and it snapped it. And, and the fight didn't look aesthetically as good for Iggy because Iggy got uh, started to get the upper hand and the refs broke it up. So he skates out and he's got this broken finger. I think he was either with Boston or Colorado. I can't remember. And I remember talking to him after the game. I messaged him and I was Iggy. Iggy said it took them like 10 minutes or something to get his finger back in. He would not leave the game because he wanted to go back and chase Kessler around because he didn't, you know, he was that mad at him. And I talked to, you know how Iggy talks. I was like, you know, how's your finger? He's like, oh, took a bit to get sorted. But he's like, oh, I was mad, Jamie. I was very mad. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we could tell, Iggy. We Is that right? Huh? Mad. Like, like, you know him, just mild manners. Like, oh, I was very mad, Jamie. Like, very upset. <laughs> and Kessler would drive you nuts. He was such a pest guy. Yeah, but he yeah, hated that guy. Was, he was actually like a pretty tough kid for a guy yeah. who was pretty, yeah. you know, wiry. So... You know, stuff like that. Like, I, I think the toughest guy, like, Rhett, who who would be your guy? Probably Paul Laos. Oh, he was scary. scary. And he was all alone. At, like, he was all alone in Florida, and he had to take on everyone. My rookie year, I think he had 39 fights, mm. all against heavies. Heavy, yeah. heavies. And he yeah. wasn't, was he, like, 6'2"? He wasn't, oh, like... Oh, 6'1", 6'1". Like, yeah. he wasn't... 
But he I was mean, a love to fight guy. He enjoyed it. Well, he kind of had he had a big head, did he not? Yep. Like big, big. Yep. He looked like he had a like I remember he was a right shot defenseman. Yep. And he just had a big squash on him. That's all I remember. It's just this <laughs> giant squash. I'm like, that guy has got hockey head for sure. And so, you know, it's funny. You look back to that time. There were guys, you look back now, how how skilled you have to be. Back then, there were guys that had no business being in the league, but they were tough. I heard guys like mm -hmm. Peter Worrell. There were so many. Apparently Worrell could hardly skate um, backwards. Yeah. Didn't, Pete Worrell uh, came to Florida. He could hardly skate forward. Yes. He could barely <laughs> play. Nolan Yachtman was a guy. He, he played yeah, a bunch, and he was a big giant. Who was the guy? I'm, I'm, I remember the three first-round picks that Colorado had when Regeer got drafted. The Sheriff. Dingman. What was Dingman? No. Oh, no. Uh, Smith. Uh, no. Parker. Scott, Scott Parker. Parker. Scott yeah. Parker, that's right. right. There were those guys. Yeah, they were perfect. just animals. And yeah. you watch, I don't know if you can play a lick, but you're you're there. Good, good on you. I thought about this because there's a big debate around here. Like, it was Austin Matthews, the greatest goal scorer of all time. And I'm like, my argument would be, against it would be, Ovi played in a, a time where there were literally guys trying to take his head off and chopping his legs and slashing his hands and and like the physicality some of the things that he had to go through to to score goals where and and now the counter argument would be goaltenders are better now than they were back then which i i don't disagree but it's 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 a different when you think about it when ovi started there were still legendary like hasek you're playing against some of the best of all time but i would argue like Ovi had to get to the middle of the ice. He had to get there where you're fighting for your life some nights. Whereas you give a guy a tap on the laces now, it's penalty. Can't, like it's never been easier to get to dangerous areas on the ice. Totally. Well, even yeah. the mental, like we talked of what I said earlier, the mental approach to the game. You're not going to bed the night before a game now, worried that someone might get yeah. you. And There's you. no Scott Stevens flu, right? Right. They, it might end you. You might, yeah. Like you, yeah. there's no fear of that, which I don't care. I'm not, it's, it is yeah. what it is. But that is something. There are nights where you're going into St. Louis yeah. playing for Florida and you're sleeping about four hours because it's like, holy. How's I your got, afternoon? How's your pregame nap? Yeah. Like yeah. you're just, <laughs> you're, not. Holy shit, yeah. holy shit, holy shit. Okay, yeah, okay, gonna have to do this. Okay, holy shit. Uh, yeah. You're not thinking about making a pass or the breakout, yeah. or how, right? Like, now those guys are in a different category and this and that, but there was, there's none of that mental stress. You're right. Like, I, 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 nowadays, I would argue probably the stress is like, if I'm a defenseman and I got to face McDavid, if I get caught McDavid mm -hmm. out there, I'm a meme now. Like I'm a, totally. I'm literally, I'm a, I'm a gif, you know, like, because he, he just does this and he's around you. So there are, you know, like Morgan Riley has a joke. I remember talking to him about it. McDavid has that move where he went inside, outside on Riley and shelved it on like that. That's going to live forever. Like that's on every one of his highlights tape, but I could argue I'm on Pavel Bure's <laughs> highlight tape. I'm on, Matt Sundin's highlight tape. Like I'm on, you know, getting rinsed the other way. You're always going to be on some highlight tape. Or to your point, Paul Correa is on Scott Stevens highlight tape uh, where, you know, he gets knocked out in the breath into the, you know, like Eric Lindros, Lindros is, is on. Sure, yeah. so you, it, it, it is, it's a different type of anxiety, but you're right. It's not, and it's not being ended physically. It's like, I'm going to be, I'm going to get ended, you know, on Twitter. I'm going to end it in the news. I'm going to end it by the analysts. Like, because I don't want to give up eight because dry saddle and McDavid decide to go off tonight. I don't want to give, you know, that's the difference. Um, but back then I was still in the same box. Cause it was, it was Gretzky. It was Lemieux. It was Sackick. It was like, I still think Joe Sackick's one of the most underrated players of all time. Like ridiculous. I, I, I used to be terrified of him. Terrified. Because as a goalie, I couldn't read what was how it was coming off his stick, and he was too quick. I could never catch up to his puck, to his shot. Like so, that's who that's who I would lose sleep over. Where you're to your point, Rhett, you're worried about a monster coming in and running it through the boards, or you getting caught out in a line brawl and some mutant comes out of the pile. You know, like I, I'm more having the anxiety. It was like I don't want to give up an eight spot because 
you know, I'm capable of doing that. <laughs> that sack He's, at Grister was as good as they say. Is, is that right? You know what? He was just so deceptive. So he would, he would, he would pop into holes and he would, his release, it was never a slap shot. It was that little snapshot. So you couldn't read it off. And he was really good at like almost selling, Hey, I'm going to go glove and then roll my wrist and go block. Or like he, 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 he was really deceptive. Okay. I'm going to drag this out. And if you got to go, I guess you got to tell us, but that's using an old Sherwood. Yeah. Right. Like don't underestimate the difference there as well. I bought two of my kids a wood stick because they see them at the hockey store. They got it for Christmas. And they're like, oh, this is going to be awesome. This is going to be awesome. They take it out on the ice and they're like, oh, my God. Ooh, like, how do you operate? How did you ever operate with this? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Sackett was doing that with gear. Well, all the old guys were. But it's a different level. Like, yeah, that makes a difference, too. Sakic was one of the first, I do believe, was the one piece graphite because synergies, synergies. Because yeah. I think what happened is that company, the the mold cost like a hundred grand to make, and they made like three of them. And it was like Sakic, maybe Forsberg, or I, I can't remember who the three were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sakic was one of them, and then everybody in the league would get a Sakic, and then they would adjust the, they would heat yeah, up the weight yeah. and kind of adjust it, right? So I remember when he got it his scary shot took another level because he was able to get it. Like the velocity was coming off even harder. You're right about wood sticks. I play with Al McKinnis. Al used a, like a, a Sherwood PMP, like a, like an old Sherwood stick. And he could shoot a hundred miles an hour. with no, a wild. wood stick. Just insane. What Al, if Brady, same deal. How the hell did they do it? That is insane. I don't know. I, you know, full circle to what uh, old school, I got called up, was on the Black Aces with uh, the Islanders in 93. It was the year that uh, Dale Hunter mistook uh, the puck in the net and accidentally ran into uh, Whoops. the Kirsch and got the 26-game suspension. So <laughs> we're playing Washington, and I'm staying at that hotel right at the edge of the parking lot in Long Island, uh, Long Island Marriott. So I'm walking over. And Washington's staying there. So Ally Afraidy is there. He's got the skullet, a leather coat. He's oh, got yeah. a tart and an ice cream. And he's got <laughs> <laughs> <That's> a steam. <laughs> like smoking. And I'm like walking behind him and he looks back and he's like, how's it going, kid? I'm like, not too bad. Good. How you doing? Yeah, yeah. I, got my tie, but I might be wearing that shirt just with a, a tie on it. But I'm, I'm like walking behind him. He's just, he's hacking a dart, eating an ice cream. There's fans that are walking and, hey, Al, hey, Al. He's like, hey, how you doing? As he, before he walks in the door, just one last tug on it, gives it the flick, goes in, he's eating his ice cream, walking down the dresser. This is at five o'clock for a seven o'clock playoff game. Like, the, you, you know how things have changed, I would say. I remember he had, they were doing the hardest shot at the all-star game and he was out there and he did he, this. That was the, the skull, the yeah. long kind of wavy dark hair and yeah. then zero on the top. Yeah. He had the toilet bowl. He had the yeah. toilet bowl up here and then the hair on the side. And it just is, he was awesome. Like I actually, I remember thinking like you are the coolest guy ever. <laughs> like because watching him that night. He probably played 30 minutes that night too. Like he was ridiculous, but I remember like, he was so out of my league. I'm like, this guy is the coolest guy, and he's a rock star player too. Like, it was it was so intimidating as like a 21 year old, like you know, third goaltender type of thing. So it was pretty neat, pretty neat to see the how things used to work. Do you have to go? Or I have to go gonna... sooner than later. But all right, well, we can let you go. We can let you go. Why? Well, let's let's one more. No, it is it's just very random. I just saw it when I because I looked through what happened in this day in history to see if there's anything. And Rhett's talked about his Mario Lemieux, how you know he gets inside outside. Lemieux had on this day he had three assists, which put his like consecutive point streak at 40 games, I think 40 straight with at least a point. And he probably had like 120 points in the 40 games. You have any uh, Mario nightmares? So there was one I thought, now I've been proven wrong, but I thought I was a part of that five goal night where he scored five different ways. Right. That's right. Empty net, power play, shorthanded, right. even but strength. It wasn't against us, shot. but there was a night where he got five points 
and I was painting myself invisible on the bench going, please don't put me in there. Please do not put me in the net. If I don't move, they can't see me. It's like, like Jurassic Park. Every goal that would go in, you're just like – and you kind of turn away from the coach, like because you're scared to hear him go right in there, like whatever. Noodles, like, noodles, get in there. Like sometimes, like the coach would be looking for you, and you're like tying your lace, like you, like I don't want nothing to do with this. So he had a night in the island. Tommy Soderstrom was the goalie. Oh, and I like Tommy had the bird cage, and he was a little guy, and he was oh, yeah. Tommy was awesome. Meanwhile, he's a side note. He he's a professional roulette player. I don't even know how you do that, but he is. <laughs> and he ran. What? He ran, That's not a thing. <laughs> he randomly sent me a note on on Twitter uh, a couple months ago. Like I, I hadn't talked to him in years. So, long long story short, we're playing pit, and Mario is just like putting on a clinic. And I think they won seven five that night. And the only reason why I didn't go in is because it was like six two. And then we scored a couple quick ones to kind of get in, in involved, like stay in the game. But Mario made a play. He, we had a four minute, we were shorthanded for four minutes. He was on the ice and I was backing up. I'm sitting right there on the blue line. They went to regroup. He was leaning on the boards by me. And he looked at me like during the play. And I was, I kind of like nodded my head. He like nodded, like kind of winked, like, Hey, how you doing kid? Like, and, and, <laughs> He was out. He stayed out for the full four minutes of the Jeez. double, like, and was just like they. We dump it down, and he'd just be leaning on the boards, like, and then to come back in, take three strides and puck over saucer plays, like ridiculous plays. He was so talented, like so. If you look at his stats, did he not get 160 points in like 60 games the one year, like 167? It's something ridiculous. Where you know it goes back to the argument. There were people that felt that him and like him and Gretzky were like that neck and neck. The first time he retired, he had more points per game than Gretzky. No, that was obviously quite young compared to Gretzky's retirement. He had a couple battles with what cancer. Yes. Uh, but he was 2.18 uh, points per game. And that was like well beyond what Gretzky did in his career all with the end of Gretzky's career, obviously in there. But yeah, there was, a, there was a case to be made uh, at a time that he, he was the best player ever. He, he, hockey was too easy for him. Like it yeah. was ridiculous what he did out there because it was two strides and you're in the zone, long reach. You could shoot the puck. You could saucer it. You could just, you just did anything and you couldn't push him out of the game because he wasn't a guy that you could physically intimidate. Like he was six, four, like six, he was four. Oh, he was a big guy. So you 60 and 60, 92, 93. Oh. Unreal. And then in 95, 96 had 161 in 70. 86 career high is Jeez. that not it goals like, like insane. Like it's scary scary stuff he he was a very you talk about not sleeping when no. there was him and yager like that yager was yeah. no you know like he was not a slouch either i remember that that same year i started in pittsburgh and i was doing a pre-scout and i asked a few of the players i asked troy loney i don't know if you remember troy sure. loney and Troy had played in Pittsburgh with them in one cup. So he goes, Noodles, I got a tip for you. If Yager gets a breakaway on you, he always goes backhand. I'm like, perfect. So he gets a <laughs> he gets a breakaway on me. I go to poke check him, take away the backhand. He just goes forehand right around me and roofs it. I go to the bench and Troy's like, I've never seen that move before. I just... <laughs> That's why <right>, like <laughs> I might have projected the poke check, but I mean, yeah. it was still ridiculous. Like those guys, like I do remember when I backed up Hexy too. We played in Pittsburgh, and and Yog scored on him and did the salute, and Hexy oh, yeah. went into the pile. Right after I heard a puck at him, went after. I was backing him up. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna have to go in here because yeah. Hexy's gonna get tossed. So. <laughs> Oh well. All right, Beautiful buddy. Stuff. Yeah, well, we'll let you get on with your day. Appreciate it. That was uh, that was just about an hour of uh, quality noodles there. Good Appreciate time. It. So, all right, guys, have a good one. We'll uh, we'll chat in the next couple of days. Sounds good, good man. See ya. There he is, Gary McLennan on the Insider Hotline presentation of TELUS. Using world-leading technology to drive meaningful change from transforming healthcare and making the food supply more sustainable to reducing our environmental footprint. They donated in 2022 alone $125 million back to local communities, the most giving company in the world, making future friendly. Learn more at telus.com slash gives back. That's a show I want to do.
That's as good as it's been ever with noodles. I don't want to talk about power plays and trade deadlines. Let's just chill. Let's just hang out. Although, in fairness, no one makes it easier than no. Jamie. McLennan. He's the best at it. That's why. Yeah. God, he's yeah. the best at it. Like, it's just every time you mention a name, he's got three stories in the barrel. Uh, like, and it's like, yeah, there, he hasn't forgot a single detail. It's, it's so one of the greatest funny. storytellers. And, and you know what? He ends up, he ends up just on a throwaway story about, oh, yeah. And then Hextall uh, got scored on and then went into the piles. Chase Jones. Okay. Well, there's, yeah, Ron Hextall. There's some stories there because he was a madman on the yeah. ice. Ah, good stuff. Good stuff. The uh, the thing that we cut now today is the 30th of uh, the thing, and then it's more of the 31st, and then you're into February, and then it's like, oh, oh right. geez, Valentine's Day in two weeks, eh? Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Vina Nova, we've been telling you about it. We are, uh, we're very happy and satisfied customers at Vina Nova. It's lab grown diamonds, they are Calgary's only shop that specializes only in lab grown diamonds. What are lab grown? Well, yeah, it's grown in a lab. It's science, people. And in in most case, in a lot of cases, the quality is better on the lab-grown diamond than the mine diamonds. Mm. Sometimes the uh, gemologists themselves, they'll take a look at it with their little and they can't tell. I, I don't know which, I don't know which is which. That's what you're getting. So why spend so much more than you need to to have the quality <laughs> diamond that uh, your significant other will love? Stephen Avenue Place, second level, 75, 80% savings it's uh Incredible. it's the way that this whole industry is going and justin at vina nova has cornered the market in our city vina nova.com second avenue stephen avenue place if you want to go in you want to call you want to check it out and the thing about it is they're, they're in the business they know what they're doing they can help you because no dumb are, questions dino you may not know I, I i don't know i don't know they're gonna lead you to uh to where you need to be which is being a uh being a champ on Valentine's Day with something from Vina Nova. I got Nova. a good uh, Justin story for you. Oh, is that right? I get this text yesterday because I'll check in and say, hello, what's going on? He's like, I shit you not. Someone showed me a pic of this epic hockey coach mullet he saw at the rink the other weekend. And he's like, dude, you've got to see this epic mullet. He shows me the picture and I'm like, yep, that's Pinder. <laughs> Small world, man. <laughs> I'm that guy now. People take You're pictures of guy. I used yeah. to take pictures of people's mullets. That was the thing I did. That was fun. Now, uh, now full circle. Because what was it when it was tight on the sides and high and it was the, the high and terrible? Is that what? Uh... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, in fairness, yours isn't the high and terrible. It's not at all. This is a mullet friend. Terrible. This is uh, I I this is in the front, party in the back. That's what it is. Now, it's getting a little. Can we get a side? Can we get the full shot and a side? Uh... Got a hoodie on. That's not helping here. I got the earphone cable in here as well. Because I'm just wondering, do we need to tighten up the sides there? We'll tighten up the beard if it Because if it gets too dark from a distance, you may not know what you're looking at. <laughs> I take it back. And it just gets bigger from, and bigger as the day goes on. From whatever You've seen angle. it. You've seen it, Dina, when it's like 3 a.m. at the party. It's just like... At its best and it's worst. Afro mullet. But at its worst, it's at its best. So here is that. They're gonna love it in Toronto. I just got this I got this feeling. It's gonna be a hit. Yeah. I do too. <laughs> I do too. How couldn't they? That's uh, Vino. yeah, Vinanova.com. <sighs> Makes me long for the olden time days, right? When I hear those stories and those names start coming up. Rudy Poshek and it, Tony it, Twist. It makes me nervous. Yeah, I oh, guess probably. So I can anxiety. honestly, it gives me. Yeah. It, you have, I, I can feel butterflies. The anxiety that I would, you would have after your, your well, you'd have it for twenty four hours because you'd be like, oh, but most specifically, waking up from the nap if, or the day of the nap or game, and you're getting up after your nap and you're going to the rink and you're just there's that. Oh, this is okay. Suck it up. You're gonna have to battle through this. This is not a good feeling, but. Get out. So there. is it a good thing that players and today I don't have that? Sorry, I I wasn't that guy. I was like fourth yeah. on the list. Yeah. Yeah. The race for yeah. Chase, you were coming in under that. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. no players would have that, you would think. The lot maybe junior. I'm trying to think when was it when would the last time be when maybe somebody would have that I don't know. Gut. I, uh, no one has to fight the afternoon skate. 
in the NHL these days that doesn't want to fight unless you've done something stupid like Nick Cousins has done a few times this year. I was looking at the fight leaderboard. You've got like Andreas Engelin's fought seven times, Nick Delorier six times. Uh, actually, Brendan Dillon, Powell, the show has scrapped a bunch this year, but those are all willing, okay, I'm going to swing momentum or I dislike this guy or, hey, that was dirty. There, there's no anxiety of having to fight if you don't want to in this league. And, you know, as sad as it is that we miss some of those stories, it's probably the way you want your league to be run. You don't want people that don't want to be fighting forced to fight, right? Yeah. If the you're only- like a lawyer and your company's worth $5 billion a year in revenue. Yeah. The only downside for kids... Is it like I think back to my first training camp when I well, it was my second training camp, the year I made the team. First game, because that's you just had inter squad games. There was no practices or skates. So you get mm-hmm. on the ice, you have an inter squad game, don't have a good game. And I'm there's five minutes left, and I'm like, Grab holy someone. shit, I better get in a fight so that I can at least <laughs> have something to to hang my hat on. Got in a fight. End of the game, Doug McLean comes up and goes, good game today, kid. Oh, my God. I, like, I was terrible, but I yeah. fought, so it was okay. Yeah. There's a lot of kids yeah. that would get to the NHL having not fought before, and that's wild. That would have been impossible in your era. Like, Pretty rare. insane. Pretty rare. You'd yeah. have to be the most skilled guy of all time uh, to be protected the whole way. You, there's just too many line brawls and things you couldn't avoid. And you know what it is now? I think of it from a different perspective, right? When I was covering junior, you loved the scraps and you loved it. And now you think as a parent, if your kid, they're on a road trip, they got an eight hour bus ride after they get into a fight, they get Mm. clunked. You're just, oh, you'd be just sick. Can you imagine if from small town, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, wherever your kid gets drafted to major junior hockey. Wow. This is great. Off to Seattle. He goes, he's playing for, the Seattle Thunderbirds, what a thing. And all of a sudden he's fighting, and now that's yeah, that's what he gets to do. So mm-hmm. they just drove to Brandon, and there's a big galoot in Brandon that right. And, right? Like yeah. parents might have more exactly the player. Yeah, right. And it wasn't like you were catching the game on t- TV, like live no. barn or something like that. Like it was Maybe a radio station if you could get it, but doubtful. And not like the coach is going to let the bus pull over so you can phone home and talk to mom and dad. Well, no. and not like the trainer after you got clunked in the head had a goddamn clue like no. what he was doing. There's you one know, guy. Yeah. yeah. Yes. He sharpens the skates and uh, un- washes the undies and, and takes out care the of ice. your concussion. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's probably better off. We're probably better off. Nowadays. Fighting's up this year, but it's definitely like players that don't like each other. It's natural, organic fighting. Yeah, on. and we saw, I think, like Roman Yossi and Alex DeBrinket went at it the other day. It was kind of funny. Not like Alex Semin playing the bongos exactly, yeah. but that's the type of fights that I think will always still be in the game. So before we move on, we'll do the Pinder Report here in a moment, but for those who are maybe you're not aware of who Ally Afraidy was going back in the oh, day, God. and we talked about the Skullet. Uh, now, I don't know if there's some Pinder. Maybe you can pull this off as you uh, as you move forward, but there <laughs> is the Ally Afraidy. And look at, the, the, look at the, the digits on the right side, 105 miles an hour. Yeah, that was the hardest stick. shot all-star game. 105 Already. mile per hour, and... Yeah, the toilet. What did he say? The toilet seat, the toilet bowl. So we that got a little on the top. That should have been our bet, Jack. That should have been our bet. Oh, yeah. You got to shave that one in. That's a big bet. I think people would rather throw a thousand bucks on the table and do that. And you look at that and you think, I wouldn't be at all stunned that that guy's having a dart and an ice cream outside the rink before the With game. a leather jacket? Yeah. Of course that guy is. For sure he is. <laughs> He's a low level superhero. <laughs> <laughs> so just saying, Pinder, I don't know. The option's there. <sighs> Yeah, we Halloween is coming. Thing. Halloween's yeah. right around the corner. You could get an I Afraidy jersey, and <laughs> if I got a sundial coming in, I'm going that way. That's my look. Okay, that's I'm not. Good. If, if I get the if I get the sundial, uh, that's what happens. Let's take a look uh, and do the Pinder Report, a presentation of Village Honda, of course, located in the Northwest Auto Mall, online at villagehonda.com. The Honda Civic continues to lead the way in value, reliability, and performance. The 2024 Civic received a 10 out of 10 in car and driver's comprehensive vehicle testing. The Civic Type R and the Civic SI rank number one and two respectively in the sport compact category. Honda, it's uh, it, you, you instantly think of reliability and value 
And when you think of Honda, you instantly think of Village Honda, your dealership for life and online at villagehonda.com. They present the Pinder Report. I believe we got a bit of a pipe bomb out of the gate, so let's start with that. A lot of people uh, were talking about that horrible start to the season, miserable 10 games. Uh, here's Pike with some context. Even if you toss out October, the Flames, 2016 and four in their last 40. They've won half uh, and a 550 clip with loser points. That's 11th in the West over that time frame from November through to today. That's nowhere near uh, the eighth that would require uh, you getting into the playoffs. Uh, so, so even for the hey, even if we just forget, conveniently forget and erase a miserable start to the season, I feel like the writing's kind of on the wall. There's not a lot of people left on team make the playoffs, team chase the wild card. It's the race for chase. The race for chase. Yeah. So what was it? Slacking for Macklin? That's the, the, the motto is this year? I don't know what, what yeah. it is, but yeah, it's... Um, I I can I can tell you that uh, the general manager is not on vacation. He is he's working at home at the Saddle Dome or somewhere, but he is uh, attending to uh, team business. To matters, he's attending. That's there are there are matters to attend to. You have uh, three prominent UFAs. You have a goalie in excellent form. You've got two or three UFAs with some trade protection. And you have theoretically extension conversations with Noah Hannafin with uh, more on the flames. Elliot Friedman uh, joined the NHL network yesterday, had this to say a bunch here. I don't think that what's happened this year has really changed a lot in terms of what their philosophies were. I think it comes down to what do the players involved want? Like a lot of these players, because their contracts are up or because they have no trade clauses, they have control over where they're going. I think with, um, I, I think with uh, Noah Hannafin, there was a time this year where I thought Noah Hannafin was going to resign. And then they lost a few games and he kind of changed his mind. He's, they've started talking again. I really think over the All-Star break, Noah Hannafin's going to have to make a decision. Does he see his future in Calgary or does he see his future elsewhere? And I think the Flames have kind of asked him, you know, you've got to tell us what you're thinking about here. Chris Tanev, I've heard there's a big market for him, not surprisingly. Reported on the weekend that Ottawa's a team that has interest in him too. They're looking for true pros. He fits. Biggest question is, does he want to go to a team right now that's not going to make the playoffs? Maybe in the summer, he might consider the Senators for next year, but I'm not sure now. I think there's a lot of interest in him. Lindholm. Again, I think there's a ton of interest in him. Vancouver, among the other teams there. I think Colorado's looked at Lindholm. Uh, I do think he'll get traded. And with Markstrom, the story I've heard with mm -hmm. him, and Kevin, you've been lighting up the Devils fans. Like, every time you tweet, <laughs> the Devils, you, you, you give the Devils fans coronaries. I, like, what I've heard about Markstrom is he does not like uh, he does not like this stuff. He does not like the speculation. It bothers him. And I think because of that, there's kind of like an unwritten agreement that they won't go to Markstrom about waving unless they've got a trade offer that's so good or he tells them that he wants to go somewhere, which I don't believe has happened to this point. I think he just wants to play. Lots there. Uh, and so just to, to tighten uh, the screws a little bit, Noah Hannafin has a 10-team no trade list, so he can say uh, two thirds of the teams I'll go to, one third I won't. Essentially, Chris Tanev has an eight team no trade list, and Markstrom has a full no move. You can't, not that you put him in the minors. You can't. You can't even send him to the Wranglers without uh, him saying uh, I want to, which no one would do. So he controls it most. And interestingly, Lindholm, who's having the roughest year of the bunch, has no control at all over the situation with no trade protection. Next and what's center. interesting there, you wonder if if that's obviously they have it, but if if those players are going to be dealt, it's probably to a team that is strong and is playoff bound. It's right. not, and you're going for a couple of months potentially at most. Yeah. I, I don't know. Shouldn't be an issue that you'd be invoking a no trade, but it's hard to say, I guess. Yeah, and then there's the when do the list get submitted? And maybe someone yeah. had Winnipeg on a list this summer because they didn't think they'd be good. But shit, look at them now. Yeah, Winnipeg would be great. Uh, I don't see it being a huge sticking point, but. Uh, it, uh, you did hear in there. The, the All-Star break, Elliot's thought is Conray will have an answer from Noah Hannafin. Is your future in Calgary or not? And if the answer is no, 
get the fax machine fired up and let the other 31 general managers know this guy's available. Not to speculate on anything, but just as a thought, mm-hmm. if I'm thinking about the Markstrom thing, then yeah. now's the time for that too. Yep. Because uh, you've got to maybe- make to make this move. You got a guy like Markstrom who's got kids, for whatever family. Totally. It's a even window with, to get something done here. Even with having term remaining, because the other guy's UFAs, even with Markstrom having a couple years left, you still kind of... I'm saying if it's going to happen for Markstrom right now, as a... Being classy about it, if you want to trade him this year, do it now. Give yeah, him and I think if you're, if you're to, Craig, you could say, look, it's a high probability we're moving Lindholm. Lindholm was a big part of Markstrom coming here. Those guys are tight. Uh, if you're Connie, you probably got to, you say, look, it's, we're probably going to move Tanev. Uh, the guy literally had Tanev's missing teeth on his mask. Like those guys played in Vancouver together. They came that same off season together. Those guys are buddies. And if you look at the team without those two, oof, it's going to be tough to be competitive. Uh, I think Craig Connery's conversation with, with Markstrom over the all-star break, if he has one is here are the things we're doing. And they also, his job is to say who needs goalies. What are the offers like? Cause if they're just meh offers, like Frank suggested, they might be yesterday. It's an off season move. If there's something tangible, then we're chatting. Yeah. Do it now. And I can and these, tell you this being in Buffalo, the, the one year, Rob Ray, Stu Barnes, Chris Gratton, I forget who else, all the guys that I was quite tight with, we had a really tight team, but mm-hmm. my age guys that we bounced ideas, obviously would be considered leadership on the squad. They all got moved. It, 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 total awkwardness and different feel going to the rink for the rest of the year after that. Yeah. Like, obviously, right? It'd be hard to wrap your head around. And I like, you wonder with Marks, you're like, these guys know what's going on, right? Mm-hmm. Like, these guys, they don't have to go to the media and listen to us no. tell them, here's what's happening. They know what's going on. The Marks, what do you want to do? Are you, yeah. you want to go anywhere? Then that we don't need to just, we're done talking. Yeah. But I, the, if you're if you're thinking you want to go, then the, you go you go past it because Markstrom knows. Yeah, I don't think, and it, it, it's Hannafin, and it's a maybe. And I don't know, I don't know. I was more kind of sixty forty. He stays. It's no. maybe slid back to a 50-50, and I'm I think it's it's starting to go down for me a little bit that he stays. Frank made a really good point yesterday. If you've already given him everything and put it on the table, and he's declined. We talked about it all summer, right? Is that the type of guy that, okay, I'm going to get more money here. I will stay. And maybe like I can, if we're not good, I'll just ask for a trade. Like, is that really what, as a GM, you're trying to collect here? It's guys not. that are just here for the money. No, no, you want guys who want to be in Calgary. And if you want yeah. to be in Calgary, this thing's done. They've had big money on the table, a bunch between the end of last season. And now $60 million. 60 is a lot we of money. We'll overpay you. That's an overpay. We will give you more money than anyone else in the league will. And we have an eighth year. And you've that's had what he all, got. He yeah, said no. You've said yeah, and you've had all kinds of time to evaluate. You've been here long enough. You know what the city is. Here's the money. Like there's there's no more surprises out there that Noah Hannafin has to. There's no more information mm-hmm. that he's going to get to make that decision. Yeah, maybe if they had could, won the if they went six and zero oh on the home you know, stands, like but it doesn't change who he's been here for years. He knows yeah. what the city and the, this team is, and yes, it's going to be a younger team. It's not immediately like he knows. It's uh, yeah, I, I'm. It's sliding for me. For I would sure. say I'm well below fifty percent now. Yeah, I'd agree, and I think that's probably good. I think they'll do well in a in a trade for Hannafin. Minute munching D. Okay, uh, off to Vancouver. Interesting things are happening in Vancouver. It's a very good team. I looked at the the standings the other day. Vancouver and Boston were at the top. Is this 2011 again? Good Lord. Uh, more from Friedman. He was a busy guy yesterday. He was on Donnie and Dolly in Vancouver. Looking for a top six forward. who can play multiple positions. Lindholm high on the radar, but may cost Vancouver a little more because it's Calgary. Now, that didn't stop him from getting a Zadorov deal done, though, earlier this fall, though, did it, fellas? Whether they played a premium See, I, or not. I, yeah, we. I'll let you finish. I have thoughts on that. Yeah, and then uh, moving forward, uh, speaking of Zadorov, Elliot wondering about them clearing cap space. Zadorov's name in the mix, and now Don Taylor as well of the other host of Donnie and Dolly, saying uh, you're starting to hear the odd thing. I'm wondering how happy they are with him, and I don't just mean on the ice. I'm wondering how he's meshing in that room. I'm not so sure there's a mesh there right now. That on Zadorov, who was acquired what in November. 
And I remember five games in, he had all those heroic things to say in the media about coaches change, pull up your socks, we got to work hard, this BS. And then two weeks later, he said, yeah, I'm out of here. And his agent saying he's the best player on the team. Maybe it's the sixth team, guys. Team number six for Nikita Zorro that will finally understand how good he is. And <laughs> Did you say usually, program. Red? Is that usually? Yeah, usually. It's the sixth one. It's yeah. the sixth team. That's what it is. It's it's not That's Nikita's fault. It's yeah. the, it, all these teams don't get it. The Stats sixth team might be the one. Wild to think he may be falling out of favor, and that's pretty heavy speculation, but it's only been two months. There's no way Vancouver's coming after Lindholm and Tanev. Well, I, I, you couldn't do both, but if you want, you could do one. Are you saying the Why, fit doesn't work or the cap? I'm just curious. How to, like, Why couldn't you do both? Well, it's 10 million bucks. That's one reason. But yeah. Flames will... It, it, They'll each yeah. can eat salary on both those guys. It, yeah, and you'd have to. Take it's money a back. long shot, yeah. but yeah, you you look back why. and the whole thing with Vancouver. I just thought it was interesting that out of that whole group, that Zadorov would be the first one out. I thought it would be Tanev, Ooh, yeah. and specifically because it was Vancouver and the relationship and the familiarity that they have there. And just I guess just the thought on and not to call anyone say that they're wrong. I just I don't I have a harder time with the could cost more because it's Calgary and Vancouver. It's for a playoff run. There's no guarantee. Rental. July 1 can hit, and if Lindholm wants to be in Vancouver, he can be in Vancouver. I just don't know yeah. why you would have to ratchet things best up. Best deal. Take your you best. You take the best deal. Yes, you do. Yep. And I agree entirely, especially on rentals. This whole, like, oh, it's in division. I mean, I think Calgary, Edmonton, there's something there. Like, They're not going to give them Markstrom without severely hurting Edmonton with what you want back. But other than something that intense, it's a rental here. This, this, you, you take what's on the table. And I don't think anyone would have the impact that Markstrom would have. Markstrom, I think Lindholm can go to Vancouver and play very well. Second line center, just, sure. Just, and yeah, Markstrom's got term left. I, I don't see it that way. And I, I reserve the right to be wrong on that. Uh, but I just don't say, and if it is the case, I don't know why it would be the case. If the deal is good, then you do it mm -hmm. because it's a UFA. Yeah, the the bottom line is if you're selling Chris Tanev and he's got his, let's see, eight teams he's not going to, you're looking at all the offers and you say, what's best for the Flames? You're not worried about what division eight teams in. That's the way I see it. I agree. Let's move along. A lot of Vancouver there. Uh, last night, this is a great Twitter account. It's called the Hockey Images That Precede Unfortunate Events. Uh, starting things off right. That was the Preds up 3 nothing. That was after 20 minutes. They'd allow three in the second. They lost 4-3 in overtime sends. Rally for the victory. Uh, who's that big bastard? Is it Mad Sogard? He got hooked. In came uh, Corpusalo. That was the only game in the NHL last night. So a relief shutout of sorts for Corpusalo, who came in and saved the day. Hmm. 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 Tonight, we got some games. We got All Star festivities as well. What do we got on the All Star? What's what's happening on the All Star? We have some All Star. Oh, look at this! It's uh, free lap dances for all NHLers at the All Star game at one of the grossest. Most rundown strip clubs in Toronto. Great stuff, guys. How do you guys. know? How, how? Uh, I had to stay in a hotel near it once. I was afraid to set foot. That's how greasy it was. Right. I'm not afraid of many things. ID required. Hey, you got to have your NHL ID. You can. Hey, I'm Ally Afraidy. I'm here for my free left hands. <laughs> Tonight, two games. Tomorrow day in three. Thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, and wow, look at these barn burners. We got some serious high octane action tonight. I think it's uh, St. Louis, and Columbus, and San Jose, and San Jose, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, did a little light on other sports. We're waiting two weeks now for the Super Bowl. Raptors not in action, so we're not interested in that. Rhett, sorry, NHL light night. I need a impromptu. Monday Night Raw recap from Boomer. What the hell happened last night? The first Raw after a pay-per-view. No, I profess I did not see uh, in it it's in entirety yesterday, but uh, some terrible news coming for CM Punk as it was revealed at the Royal Rumble. He tore his tricep muscle. Ow. So he was in a sling uh, to the extent, I don't know if it's it's surgery, but uh, CM Punk, who had really run afoul of the WWE, he left for 10 years. And had nothing but awful things to say about the WWE. Well, he's back. Jeez. They have mended fences. And his dream is to headline WrestleMania. And uh, he was emotional last night. Tears in his eyes that uh, that's going to have to wait. And who knows? It may never happen.
And I attend, we had said yesterday that Cody Rhodes had won the Royal Rumble. So now he is going to WrestleMania to face the champion. Will it be Roman Reigns or will it be uh, Seth freaking Rollins? Oh. Uh, and he pointed up to the skybox and said, I'm coming for you, Roman Reigns. Well, Seth came out yesterday and he is injured as well. He's got a ACL, MCL, something like this. But he said, hey, if you've, if you've got what, what I think you've got in those trunks of yours, you're going to come for me at WrestleMania. So he's lobbying for the in the American nightmare to be done with Roman Reigns and come after the real belt. So the American it's nightmare. He it's heating up. Because his dad was the American dream. Dusty. It's just beautiful. Dusty. Yeah. Oh, Dusty. Death the roads. I keep thinking Mondays are the heavy days for the dumb shit, but I got another 10 clips here and it might be better than 10 yesterday. only <laughs> only 10. Damn it. <laughs> Quiet day. We're gonna start with the redneck merry-go-round, fellas. Just takes a little ingenuity. You don't need anything fancy, nothing expensive here. You want to have some fun? What the hell's the redneck merry-go-round? Oh, it's God. on tomorrow's show slash Thursday. So let's move along. Uh Rhett's they got three kids. Uh we saw the the junior sabers. <laughs> The other day <laughs> with the five on five brawl, but some of his younger kids are playing as well. I, I this has to be Junior Sabres, right? Fill us in for a while. Oh, you thought yeah. I'm young James yeah. just tossing right. Oh, yeah, He's typically a lefty, but he injured his hand earlier in the game. Well, there you go. And there's lots of them here. This is uh, the one ref that feels unfair. Yeah, yeah, this oh. is not. I feel like at this age, probably the coaches could go out there and start to help the ref. Ah, the coaches are probably fighting the other side of the camera. I think that's probably how this all started. It's bad coaching, right? That leads to these types of situations. I'm oh, told. Goodness. This is yeah. really something for this. Yeah, age. and if you if you look at the end boards, this must have been a road trip for your youngest because th there's Russian text See, the on ref, the boards. Yeah. We've all played this game when the kids are young, the shark uh, fishing game, where you got to get all the kids into the net. Cops and robbers. The net. Yeah, yeah, is yeah. The, he's just got to start throwing kids into the net. Yeah, cops and robbers for That's sure. Right. Put them in the net. You can't leave. Cops and robbers. Stay in the net. That's the yeah. Jail. You got to stay in jail. Because freeze tag's probably not going to work. They're they're nope. probably not going to listen to you. But if they're well, in the their net, buddies, it's going to be yeah. toilet tag, and the buddy's going to come right. around and flush them. They're going to flush get back up, get back into it. Dean, I've never thought of you as much as I have when I saw this. this great. But the Costco hot dog meal for the past week to see if paying a dollar fifty for a glizzy and drink was worth it for seven days. And here are the results. I ate twenty nine hot dog meals for a grand total of forty three dollars and fifty cents, one fourth of what the average millennial spends on food a week. I also might have started a new diet trend on accident because I lost four point two pounds in seven days, or I have a giant tapeworm. And to my surprise, I never got sick of eating hot dogs once, despite my bowel movements resembling Willy Wonka's chocolate river. So was it worth it? Are you kidding me? I balled on. A budget, lost weight, and had the culinary experience of a lifetime. Absolutely. <laughs> I was watching this guy. He was doing the updates throughout the week. Love it. I mean, it's it's a dollar fifty, folks. That's an inspiration right there. Yeah, and he lost weight. If you want to go two banger, you're probably just going to be sea level. You're not going to. Yeah, you don't need. To, you don't need two banger. Yeah, I got that dog in me. That's right. <laughs> Can we get you that shirt somehow? Oh, I've yeah. I mean, they're out there. Yeah, they are. Out get there. one. We need some sort of show budget. That's that's like thirty American dollars we need to spend. Someone's gotta have that for boom. It's so you get the drink too, guys. Don't sleep on the drink. You're getting the drink and the dog for a buck fifty. I was too. craving one the other day. Mm. I almost drove to Costco just to have lunch. New yeah. York is a wonderful city. It's also got some issues, Red, as you've often alluded to. Let's go to the subway here where just keep your eyes peeled. There's some little creatures around. In New York City Transit. Got some rats there, I think. Now, this is a fellow down on his luck. He's having a snooze here. Probably doesn't want to be here, but he is. What the hell? Yo. Yo. Oh, my God. Oh. Keeping them warm. Next, let's go to Australia. Dumb shit happens in Australia too, Dean. We know this. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a heavy collision. Oh, jeez. Oh, no more. No. Oh, Dean. Oh, Jack. 
Yeah, that's right along the uh, Bow River there. Mm. Terrible. Now you're you're a big cyclist. You when you're not at the velodrome, you're out on the roads. Uh, that's right. You're always cycling, and when you're cycling when you're indoors, here, you're on the peloton. You're yeah. just always strapped in. I uh, couldn't believe what you caught here on your bike camera. This is nuts. Oh, <laughs> holy shit! Yeah, that's <laughs> holy shit. With a deer. Are you sure it's the deer? That was a deer. Where's this deer come from? You see deer nothing, are nothing, stupid. nothing, nothing, nothing. Oh, you idiot. <whistles> Little buck there, Red? Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, dear. Venison. If you caught those antlers, that would have been, ugh. Stupid deer. Like yeah. the deer hit the side of the, hit the side of the car. Ran into the car. Just Broad stay where daylight. you were, you idiot. Broad yeah. daylight. Not in the night where the no. lights maybe are no, blinding no, 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 them. No. Broad daylight. Bam. Settle you know, down, deer. Settle down, deer. Humans are dumb too, though. We go to the rainforest where a man in the chainsaw and a ladder went to work. No. <laughs> we got motherfucking Tarzan. <laughs> yeah, that's just gonna. Oh god. <laughs> Pendulum effect. <laughs> oh, that's you had to see it coming, don't you? We got motherfucking Tarzan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch your mouth. It's a Bloody kid's shit. Moving nice. up the tree there. <laughs> I'm worried about that ladder. The ladder's not an issue. It's oh, quite stable. God. Oh, ladder's oh, very sturdy. Good lord. Yeah. <laughs> Just tossed. Jeez. With a chainsaw in his hand, falling like two stories. Oh. The the chainsaw ladder combo. Brilliant. I didn't know what was going to be. Very few people win. Yeah. Well, it's just your, you don't know which way. It could go either way. Turned out kind of mm -hmm. to be both. It kind of goes the same way. It's This is this is a video that's going well. viral. It's just a matter of how. The ladder was still intact at the end. That's the real yep. stunner. Yeah, right well done. There. Yep. It's two where we had a little ladder misdirection. Yesterday, the guy landed it, and today, the yeah. ladder was fine. Very sturdy placement. Right, you're ahead of your time. You've been calling this for ages. The Germans, they get it, just like you. Uh, the four-day work week, starting Feb 1st, a six-month project in Germany. How about that? You in, Rhett? I'm off to, uh, yeah, hey, Cologne in. here next week. You're off week, to, so. uh, yeah, <laughs> Cologne, Lisbon. Eh? No, <laughs> Cologne for sure. Now, you were there for, what, the World Cup? Is that right? Yes, I was. What year was that? Do you remember? Oh, six. Oh, yeah. And did you visit a bunch of cities or did you sort of centralize around one stadium and area or what? Dusseldorf and we right. went to a couple other cities. Yes, it was. It was great, except for the smoking in the stadium. Oh, and no booze in the stadium either, I'm guessing. No, right? in a beautiful country like Germany with all that wonderful oh, beer, beer. Yeah. it was a very big name brand beer from nice. America. Oh, hmm. people wouldn't have liked it. Yeah, I remember that. There's the big sponsorship thing. I was, oh, dear. Yeah, it was brutal. So question for you, right? If we're if you are going to implement the four-day work week, how are yeah. you taking the off days? Are you doing four straight days and then a longer weekend? Are you doing a couple, slide a day, do a couple? How are you? Do you three? rest in the middle? Wednesday rest day? Monday to Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. Okay. Well, Thursday's a drinking day. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Good call. No brainer, kind of. Because I don't the mind the thought of doing the two days and then, whew. No, 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 no. You don't ever recover then. No. Well, Jack's got to figure it out. He's got a three-day work week this week. Attaboy, two Jack. day. Jack. Two day work week. Jack, how many days are you working? Now you're in Saturday. You had lots of two shows Saturday. Yeah, I did work Saturday, Sunday. Sunday, Monday. Too. Well, I had to edit. Oh, jeez. I was going to say, probably going at Jack about having a slack work schedule. Oh, no, I'm excited for him. He's at, This is good. He's got a little time because we're off to Toronto. No Jack's in Toronto, they said. Something about uh yeah, they saw him in Jasper know. and said, please don't through security. So. It's gonna be an issue. Hmm. Got big plans for your time, Jack. I'm going to Montana. Mantana. I'll be at the Bulldog. Yeah. Wow. When they do don't they start serving at what time? They 11 don't take, okay. they don't, no more Canadian at par. I know. We were talking about that the other day. He's distraught. Brutal. You just take Canadian money at par, do you know? Do they take Canadian at par in Buffalo? No, it's the shits. It's the. 
Only at the grocery store. Still, hey, they still are in that whole. What about at the sundowner? They don't uh, use the metric system or right. take Canadian money at par. No, hey, Damn. this whole Fahrenheit thing, they're sticking with that. Yeah. That's dumb. Damn Yankees. Uh, do you think, Dean, you'd ever jump on a vehicle to save either Rhett, Jack, or I? If 100%. our life was in there, you would? I'm a hero. Because I don't know if like, it was your dog's life that was in jeopardy. You'd, you'd, well, I've given, yeah, yeah. I just wonder about anyone that's not one of your dogs. Would you literally put your life on the line in front of a vehicle to save us? Today, yes. I, I feel like uh, spirits are high today. So maybe today. I don't Yesterday, believe it. Probably not. Uh, let's roll the tape. For a second, he's full of shit. What? That's a lady on the hood of a car. <laughs> Have a look, fellas. As he started to go faster and faster, I started to say, I'm about to die. This is my death right now. I'm about to die. That's good looking pooch, apparently. Having lunch. Lunch? I didn't think that somebody was stealing my dog. I thought it was a misunderstanding. So I was like, that's my dog. Excuse me. And she wasn't listening. And she turned and she got right into a car. And I tried to follow her into the car. But I got in there and there were four people in the car. Nervous was full, Dean. So what do you do? She sped off and unfortunately took this woman with her. It's devastating that someone would take someone's animal. You're right, Harrison. How could you? Jumped on the hood of the car. This car, driving down the street full speed. Don't care that you're on there, lady. Toss her. Still got the dog. This is brilliant. Like, dogs Riveting are expensive stuff. nowadays. Come you on, go on, pick Brad. up a whole bunch in one afternoon. Well, you'd have to have a specialized vehicle. You wouldn't want them fighting when you're in your getaway car. You'd need them to be... Oh, no, dogs are friendly. You don't go pick up one of those mean bastards. You Little things well, like they're that. They're just going to be confused about their owner. Dean, has anyone ever tried to steal your dog? I would see red, for sure. Yeah, I would lose it. You stole you my be... dog. What do you have? Why are you... Don't even go there, Steal red. it back. I'm not sure steal... Mm-hmm. Saved, mm-hmm. rescued your a dog. Rescue. It is yeah. a rescue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not how my kids see it. It's not how your kids see yeah, it. What are truly. you telling your children about that it's transaction? Not, it's not how it's been sold in this house. <laughs> mm. <laughs> he so won't again, give it back. That damn Molberg, he just won't. We I went over a bunch of times. Well, can we take him? No. No. Pretends he's not home. It's a good thing you guys live in Buffalo. I'd be driving down the street when your kids be jumping on the hood of my car. I don't know, Dad. Give me back my dog. Mr. Dean said we could have him back anytime. No, no, he's not letting us. That's a stolen dog. He, don't don't fall into that trap, son. He's not letting us have that dog back. And you know what? It's probably not that far from the truth. Yeah, we dropped him off, and they just they said they wanted to they keep him, him. So I don't know what to tell you, kid. That that my kids. A child of you're a horrible this dad. It's it's horrible. Horrible. Yeah, it's tough growing up in that household for sure. You wouldn't jump on the hood of a car for Rhett today. I not with that dog behavior. No, nope. can't be tooting dogs like that, Rhett. That's pinned to report for uh, whatever day today is uh, the 30th of January, or Tuesday. Can't August. wait for that uh, redneck uh, merry-go-round. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be so good. It's a lot. And it was the first story out of the shoot too. Yeah. Well, what's, and you know what? I just, what's I, the redneck merry-go-round? <laughs> Uh, don't, we don't have redneck merry-go-round. <laughs> Village Haunt, a huge selection of used slash pre-owned vehicles. It's kind of the same thing. All makes, all models, all budgets. Over 90 units on site access to more than 500 more inside the dealership group. That makes Village Honda your one-stop automotive destination in Calgary. They are worth the trip. Located in the Northwest Auto Mall. <laughs> okay. Uh, speaking of, also, speaking of Thursday... Get your questions in for oh. Ask Rhett. Presentation of Bon Ton Meats, a Calgary tradition since 1921. Now, uh, did you hear, because it was your birthday on the weekend, that uh, Bon Ton, there was some thought, maybe, you know, Rhett loves Bon Ton, can't get Bon Ton. What do we got to do to get Rhett some Bon Ton? And uh, it's just, it's apparently... It's just a little too hard to get you quality meat. Or I'm not worth it. Are we in your feels here? You got some hurt feels, Red? Yeah, what I'm sensing? Maybe. Your birthday was driving back. I think, Rochester well, I think it was. Not having um, anything. It was kind of, yeah, whatever. 
the cost the Stanley is going Cup to be. finals, and I, I lost them all. What, why would I expect anything nice for my birthday? Oh, God. Hmm. Give that music hand. Uh, yeah, that's good. It, it's, uh, it's working well today. Yesterday it was kind of warbly coming in and out. I don't know what the settings were yesterday. That sounds great mm. today. Ask Rhett is uh, going to be on Thursday. Email your questions in for Rhett. Uh, like last week, if your buddy's getting married for the third time. Well, he's an what idiot. You, he's yeah. an idiot. Upgrader. I love him. Yeah, if he's upgrading. Uh, Ask Rhett at flamesnation.ca is the email. Ask Rhett at flamesnation.ca and we'll get those questions through <laughs> no no look at this look at this you got I a support group growing here Rhett. Just... Rhett is the last person anybody should be feeling sorry for i i mean oh he's got he can't even sleep properly his shoulders <laughs> hurt he's gonna no. sleep in a chair some nights dean <sighs> poor guy a little yeah. sympathy might not be my shoulder but i do sleep on the couch sometimes <laughs> right yeah 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 uh bonton meat market of course, uh, you know them, you love them. 28 Crowfoot Circle in the Northwest. It was going to be really good too, Rhett. Um, I mean, it was, you know, Greg Keller, he's going to pull out all the stops. Whoo, boy. Yeah. Never disappoints. Uh, blame. Blame Canada. I know. I guess blame. Uh, somebody. Uh, and maybe you have travel questions because Rhett's going to have to, you know, cross a border. He's got paperwork. There's hotel protocols, visiting other cities. Maybe you have questions about travel. Rhett's a very, very, very seasoned traveler of the globe and especially big cities in North America. Any Are they sending a car for me? To where? To take me Just up there. Or do I have to drive my own? <laughs> well, you got a flight. Yeah, we did. We're flying. We're not driving from Calgary. That's right. Why? Uh, because it's about he loves 30 road hours. Trips. He loves road trips. No, he does it with me. He'd rather choke himself with a belt. <laughs> End his life. Uh, this could be a question for tomorrow, but uh, here it is today. Can we revisit the loaf of broccoli? You had talked about, uh, you know, these players. Just let them let yeah. be. But, listen. For you non-health nutty people, i that's what the people do now with the broccoli. Mash it all up, and then they bake it into a loaf. And then oh, you... see, I, that's what you mean. Yeah. Zucchini bread, yeah, sure. Because at the time, it sounded like you were purchasing broccoli to eat no. by the loaf. Two loaves of broccoli, please. Which is an odd way for it to come. <laughs> it's, it's the metrics. It's the, uh, yeah, the non-metric yeah, yeah. system, yeah. the yeah. other system. Yeah. And I've not been in a grocery store in the U.S. for a while. These uh, the broccoli loaves I hear. Yeah. It's quite an advancement. New technology. AI. Yeah. AI. Yeah. Uh, I want to get this in. I told the story last week um, about my my Douglas mattress. Are you are you seeing like me? And maybe it's just because now I'm I'm in. I got Douglas mattress in my medulla oblongata i'm you know it's in my headspace now so now i'm seeing it pop up on social media i'm seeing commercials and all of that it's like okay yeah this mm -hmm. i guess there's a reason this is why this mattress named canada's best mattress on canadian living loved by more than two hundred thousand canadians ten thousand five-star reviews uh we got word douglas potentially going to come on board as a sponsor so let's let's yeah let's, let's see go. if we can make this thing work beautiful 
sent the mattresses to our place and we've all seen by now comes in the box it's I, I don't know how they wrap it it's we've put a man on the moon and we've taken a king size mattress and <laughs> put a suction thing on it and and put it in a box my wife I, I told the story before. She's, oh, I, I just, I don't know. I like our, I like our bed. I like the, our current bed. And I said, hey, this is a sponsor. We got to, we're going to try the bed. So, boom, put it down the next morning. Yeah, we can get rid of the old bed. That old match has never liked it. One Time sleep. To go. Yeah, took one sleep for her to come around and be, She she's like one of those uh, 200,001 Canadians. Can there up you go. that number. Um, it's, uh, if, if, if you're at all skeptical, don't be. And I'm not sure I was skeptical. I just thought, well, how good could it be? Uh, yeah, there's a reason why this uh, this company, 200,000 Canadians, that's a lot of Canadians. It's a lot of that's people lot, getting yeah. quality sleep on a Douglas mattress. And right now, and they're made in Calgary, that's ensuring cool. the highest quality materials. We've got the deal right now, douglas.ca slash Flames Nation. Try it for yourself. Every mattress order comes with a free comfort sleep bundle. What is that? Well, it's two memory foam pillows with pillow protectors, a luxurious cotton sheet set, and a mattress protector. A $650 value is yours for free when you order a Douglas mattress right now. And again, the website, douglas.ca slash Flames Nation. That gets you the deal. And well, what if you don't like it? There's a, Hey, everyone's different. A 365 night risk free trial. If you don't like it, you get the full refund. Refund, no questions asked. It's it's hard to find anything here that I mean. Douglas is going to every extent to get this mattress into your home and make you a believer. I'm a believer. Pinder's in, and Red, if he ever goes to his house, I believe he too will be a believer. I, I was with you, like this box, this size, like you're sure this isn't a kid's bed? We, they, we did say king, right? And then it's like, I'm like, this is crazy. It is crazy. We have to leave it for like three days? Nope, it's ready. Yeah. What? Douglas.ca slash Flames Nation. Get, and it's delivered to your door. You bring it in, you open the bag, and it's ready to roll. You don't have to uh, strap it to your roof and in, in the rain? No, you don't. And you don't need to go from one mm. place to the next, to the next, to the next. Yeah. Strap a sales guy breathing down my neck. Douglas.ca slash Flames Nation shows up to your door. I've been sleeping like a baby. Oh, I baby. Go, I might go hit that sucker this afternoon. Yeah, you might need some. We're up early tomorrow, brother. Yeah, we are uh, headed to Toronto. We are going to be doing shows on Thursday, Friday. Now, the showtime Thursday, Friday going to be a little bit different. It'll be a little bit later. Is it? Let's walk me through this here. Uh, 12.30 until 2 p.m. is kind of the window. It's not going to work. So it's 12.30 mountain time? That's what I believe to be true. Okay. Didn't know what time zone it is. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Now, subject to change. Because we, uh, it's the Nation Network, Flames Nation, Oilers Nation, our buddy Jay, Jay Rosehill, Leafs Nation, he's heading in Rose. as well to do some shows with Nick Alberga, Oiler Boys, and the, I, the Ottawa guys are going in. It's the, the Nation Network, and I don't expect anybody to really, no, it's it's getting bigger pretty much by the week. Every couple of weeks, it's like this new show is in, and this this show has come on board. So we are going to, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a big whoop-de-doo. It's what you need to know. That's what Dean says when he doesn't have a damn clue what it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's a whoop de doo for sure. I sent you the link. You saw it. Would, uh, I can't figure it out myself. It looks like a whoop de doo to me. You it know, it does look like a whoop de doo. Yeah. If you're from a small town, <laughs> this is a whoop de doo. Oh, man. Like, I mean, you can go to, what is it? Egg, farm egg, and farm in days, Virginia. egg days. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, egg days. That's a whoop de doo. This similarly. Yeah, this will be a big, uh, big old deal. I remember uh, when my my old man used to travel a bit for work, and I was like, "Oh, so this is a work trip?" He's like, "No, no, and this is a boondoggle." I'm like, "What the hell is a boondoggle?" And he's like, "Well, it's supposed to look like work, but there's there's no work happening. This is all tomfoolery and nonsense." Uh, I'm hoping it's a bit of a boondoggle. Is that what a boondoggle is? I don't know if I knew. Yeah, it's just... like, oh yeah, we're gonna do a lot of work. Like, mm-hmm. gonna meet. <laughs> Yeah, it always sounded like water one of those skiing. Things. I'm like, the hell is this work thing? You're water yeah. skiing in Switzerland? Leave that. It's not one of those things. Boondoggle. Isn't that like 
sounds like politics politicians speak and my oh, brain just yeah, shuts yeah. off it's like I don't what's mean the one where they talk forever and ever and ever and ever just to kill time oh, yeah. Like, yeah we're out of time parliament's over yeah yeah that's a move too goosh yeah, that's a goosh yeah so that's uh that's what's coming up so i believe no show tomorrow i hope everyone will know that's gonna do the show oh you're doing the show Thanks, well you Rhett. gotta get i gotta get ready for the boondoggle you got the boondoggle <laughs> prep yeah Get yeah, your goggles for the boondoggle. Serious boondoggle. Bring a swimsuit. Bring something with sequins on it. Tight and bright. Let's go. That's Funky right. hat. Uh, so for DoorDash, let's do DoorDash, and we'll spin it right into uh, our Betway bets because well, you already, I think you kind of laid out in the Pinder report. Slight. She's a little, a little slim. A little but we are professionals. And these these leagues with their schedules, they can try and screw us, but it's not... It's not that easy. We've been doing this a long time. With DoorDash, restaurants, groceries, pharmacies, bakeries, flower shops, and more, it's that easy. You get the app, you go online, you get what you want from where you want, whenever you want it, and it shows up at your door. And for a limited time, you can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on your first order of $15 or more with that DoorDash app and the promo code NATION25, NATION25. With that said... What's on the menu for DoorDash? Got a couple fellas. I got a six o'clock and I got an 830 for you. Six o'clock. It is Johnny Hockey's against the St. Louis Blues. As uh, two teams of Flames just saw in this recent homestand will clash against each other. Uh, more on the Betway Bets in a moment. The nightcap, we're off to San Jose, where the Sharks, who have some players playing in the NHL that I think we can call NHLers, will be hosting a Kraken club that's actually been pretty okay of late. That at 830. Uh, no wrestling tonight, Dean. Am I correct? I know yesterday there was a lot there to unpack on a Monday. No, they've been in uh, they've been in Florida for a long time. They had SmackDown, and then of course the event on the weekend. And last night they were at uh, the Amelie Arena, wherever the Lightning plays. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Moving on until uh, Friday, Friday night SmackDown. The next. Uh, Do you know where we'll SmackDown is this week? Where is it? Do you know? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, that's for next week's show. Anyway, we'll that's leave right. that alone. Uh, that is what's on the menu for DoorDash. There you go, folks. Nation 25, that's your promo code to kick in that 25% off deal, zero delivery fees. It's your first order, and it's got to be $15 or more. But outside of that, uh, hey. And sorry, Rhett, offer valid in Canada. Oh, you can still DoorDash. You just... I DoorDash all the time. I well, and the thing is, it's your, it's your first order, Dean. He's already ripped through that, too. That's true, so, yeah. 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 Dash that for the win with our buddies from DoorDash. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, update did not have a uh, bacon mushroom melt yesterday didn't no so you had two no no i was out we and I was you doing, were gonna have one we were i resisted on the temptation it's like you know what just try and just come on guys. now today no promises are going to be made took a lot of stamina and wherewithal <sighs> i found the word <laughs> filibuster a filibuster now yep, that's it man There'll be some filibustering at dinner tomorrow night. I think I really want to get into politics. You should. Yeah. It really crazy. seems like it's good people. Yeah. No bullshit. A lot of smart people get involved. Yes. A lot of hard workers. Um, mm -hmm. People that have great paths usually just sweep that to the side yeah, because yeah, yeah. I need to give back. Because we right. were in Jasper and, you know, we sat down, good people. We had a lot of drinks, like a lot of drinks, uh, yeah. but we never really sat down and talked politics. Mm. Did it Maybe feel like something was missing? Yeah. Uh, okay. This is our country and we love our country, except yeah. for Red, who's not in it anymore. Um, it. Maybe it's time that we all maybe just have a, take a little, grab a hold of the stick. This country that we know and love. Yeah. Let's have, let's have more investment. Well, a little ask for you, and a fly in the ointment potentially. Oh, uh, a lot of these politicians, the way they build momentum and then get voted into office, you got to be outside meeting people, strangers, shaking hands, posing for photos. Is there a, a name for that? Of, uh, campaigning. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, campaigning. yeah. That's, uh, it seems old. That that's, it seems like an old new way of Maybe doing it. Maybe we get so. Jack and RJ on it. We'll do a social media thing where yeah, you don't have to leave yeah, your house. It'd be like a virtual yeah. dean. Yeah, just holding a tablet. Okay, is it there? Hi, who we got? That's uh, Jack and Susan. Hey, Jack and Susan. It's Boomer. I'm at home. Say hi to Jack and RJ. Vote Boomer. 
Really looking forward to getting your vote here. In the I've been election. talking. We should get involved in politics for years. I you just missed been, the yeah. deadline for the mayoral yeah, candidacy a few you times. You 100 I, signatures, and you missed the cutoff by a few days. So. It's a great idea. Again, we just needed an execution guy. Are people fond of our mayor here in Calgary? I heard there was a big uproar about bags right now. Calgary. There yeah. is a thing There's in a thing with uh, bags. I don't. Is that civic or is that political? I don't even know where those rules are coming from. Well, it's, a, it's certainly Calgary for sure. Oh, I know it's Calgary. Uh, yeah. So, for example, if you go to uh, a, a fast food outlet and you go through the drive-through, mm -hmm. uh, they they won't give you your food in a bag anymore unless you pay, pay for the bag. bag on top of that, and they won't give you straws for your drinks unless you ask for them. And I don't think you get napkins, but for sure it's the what? bag. They'll just start what? handing you the individual a la carte items just through the drive through window into your vehicle <laughs> without a bag. I think my grandfather said something along the lines of changing government is probably like changing underwear. That's probably best to do it more often than less often. And like my grandpa or, or dad or a lot of my relatives have mm -hmm. said, that this seems to be going over like a fart in church. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that. Not going well. Sorry to get so political. Let's do our Betway yeah, best. No, seriously, well. Wow. Sorry. I mean, I feel like we've Gosh. impacted the election. We're going to be in trouble. Yeah. Well, I'm Remember on the radio, you couldn't even talk about stuff like that. You'd get thrown off the air. You'd get suspended. Hope it's not the same here. Hope it's not the same here. Brett, two-man show. Look out. Betway, get the Betway app on your phone. Betway app, we get we're two weeks to this to the big game, that big football game that's going to be played. Uh, there's two. I mean, you're San Jose, Seattle tonight. Get on it. Get on it. You can't without the Betway app. Bet the responsible way with Betway. Two games tonight, you mentioned. I'm on yeah. both of them. Nice. Saint Louis, home to the Ouch. Blue Jackets. Uh Pavel Butchnevich. Four goals in uh, his last six games. He's on a little bit of a roll here. Give me an anytime goal for Boach at plus 140. And similarly, Jared McCann, he's scoring at a decent clip. They're in San Jose. Six in his last eight is what the uh, ticker has for McCann Ooh. as far as goal scoring. Anytime goal, plus 162. So I'm on the plus side for both. Look, Just looking for goals from Buchnevich and McCann. The McCandy man can. I think they call him that. I wouldn't say that, but okay. you did, so maybe they wouldn't. Uh, I'm all over this uh, Blue Jackets Blues. A lot of blue. Blue, blue. Blue Jackets or just blues? Blue notes. Blue notes. Blue Jackets. This is both bets there. Uh, let's start with Igor Chinnikov. Remember the shocking first-round selection mm -hmm. from Yarmo Kekalainen? Plus money for a single point. He's had at least a point in five of his last six. So I'm going to ride the hot hand there. And I didn't mind Johnny's game against Calgary. Uh, yes, it was classic Johnny, where it was like, where are you in the D zone? But he was making some plays, setting up guys in good spots. A two-point night. Think about this two years ago in Calgary. This would have been almost even money. Two points for Johnny in a game, plus 320. Yes, sir? It's about what bet. Thank you, Betway. Preach. See you soon. They're coming back out. Jeez. For this, uh, for the filibuster? If, uh, for the uh, boondoggle? The boondoggle. Yeah. Are they boondoggling in uh, the big smoke? Yeah, they'll be in Hogtown boondoggling with the rest of us. I had no idea. Which I had no idea. Chicanery and tomfoolery as well, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do like chicanery. A little add on yeah. the side. Yeah. Well, that'll do it. Um, I feel bad about tomorrow, but we'll make it up to you on <laughs> Thursday and Friday. For sure. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Do I have to bring gear? <laughs> no, he's no. So nervous. I love it. No, bring yourself. How do I get there? Am I supposed to drive? You know, <laughs> are they sending a car? You should just get a helicopter like Evander Kane did when he went. To, it was like yeah. practice, come back from the Blue yeah. Jays game, uh, and be like, just expense it. Just like, yeah, and then uh, this yeah. uh, eighteen thousand dollars here. That's just my ride. To, uh, what? Do you know what the traffic's like driving into Toronto? Oh, it was five minutes. I know. It's the efficient way to travel. Better huh? leave now. Get there for Thursday. Gosh. Uh, I think you've probably got some budget you can expense uh, a way to get to there. So there's a uh, $22 breakfast. This is parking at the airport for $19. Yeah, I love this. 32500 for a helicopter. Whoa. Ooh. 
Who had the helicopter? Who got the chopper? Who? The last time I tried to submit an invoice, they turned me down, the bastards. What? Right? What? The, oh. the bastards. Oh. Who not turned you down? Not the not these bastards. Some other bastards. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah these bastards aren't bastards. These bastards will probably put it through. <laughs> yeah, these bastards are what probably. What was that show it. where everyone was a bastard? <laughs> Well, there was Fat Bastard. That was in one of the... uh... (laughs) These bastards. Oh, Seinfeld. (laughs) Well, George was with the Texas group. The yeah, 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 the yeah. Got, These bastards. Yeah, because all the Texans have the hey, yeah. bastard. Oh, you bastard! <laughs> it's a good show. Uh, when does Curb start? Right away, right? Is it this weekend? <sighs> what season? The are finals. We? It's the final season, and there's been Again? about three of them for poor Larry. Poor Larry. You talk about anxiety. So I just can't believe we have to do another season of this. So that he does another season. That is it. I am done. It's just mm-hmm. it stresses me out. My I just. Uh, the anxiety i'm just i can't do it anymore the last season of curb your enthusiasm i can't this is it i can't do it anymore then they just keep backing up trucks of money to his house it's like oh god all right i'll write another 14 or however many there are of these things so i believe it's this weekend god i love larry the uh 2023 season of the show larry makes 20 million dollars for that uh, appearance so that anxiety it does come with a bit of a payoff, Dean. He's also estimated yeah. to make about 40 to 50 million a year in uh, Seinfeld royalty syndication, merchandise, and video sales. My God. Isn't that a, like 100? <sighs> like you're talking 60, 70 sheets a year. Uh, boy, I hope he can get over that anxiety. What do we make for our uh, royalty catalog and library from uh, over at the other place? Because we put in a good solid 10, 15 years there. I'm sure the hits are still getting played. People sure. really want to go back yeah, and yeah, yeah. revisit that Rene Bork episode. Um, oh, well. Mm. Yeah. Or that guy that came in about the big book. Big book. It's a big, it's a, it's a five it's pound a real book. big book. It's, it's an a NHL, big book. It's, it's heavy. A flame, it's a real that flames big. book. It was so heavy. Oh, yeah. big, was it a big, big book. book? Yeah. yeah. Massive book. Friggin' George Johnson comes in. Oh, I can't talk. I got laryngitis. You got to talk to this deadbeat. Oh, great. Thanks, George. Thanks, Georgie. <laughs> Me Thanks, and my mom. And my mom, we wrote cookbooks. Oh, did you? Oh, really? Hey, company's coming. yeah, it was companies coming. Oh, I've heard of that. Yeah, that was me and my mom, and we wrote these cookbooks. And it's like, just shoot me, <laughs> please. Somebody, I does got, anybody I have a hammer? At, I got up at three. <laughs> it's like, Jay, do you have a hammer in there? Could you beat me on the head with it? <laughs> Come there was some, coming. uh, there were some odd guests that got thrown at us now, and then there was also Holy some where you're like, oh. You think you're pretty awesome, don't you? <laughs> well, you're a pretty big deal. Yeah. Well, well it's, it's you know inter- in your hometown, you're you're a really big deal. Is that right? You wow. hear a lot about intermittent fasting, but I mean, I've been doing this for so long. <laughs> I mean, that's just I've been doing this for years. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, you're a big deal. I was asked by the party to run for federally, but I don't know if I'm ready yet. I don't know if I can. Uh, yeah, it's just I don't know if they're ready for me. I'm certainly ready. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Then there was the guy. I don't know if you'd, you. It might have. It was before your time, Ryan. But there okay. was like. Shut up, Dean. No, do it. Come on, do it. Oh, no show tomorrow. Um, oh, you can't tease us like that. Uh, shit. Uh, Thursday, Friday from Toronto. You're dead to me. This guy is sitting, it's in the old studio. So I think it was Walker. So there's Walker, guest, me, and we're all in a line. It's mm-hmm. the worst studio ever. You're touching your ever. knees. Are yeah, touching you're basically you. beside each other like this. It's a tighter bar. than a pub. And I, we, so yeah. Ask this guy about whatever it is he's in for it. Whatever the topic is that he is coming to talk about. There's no real reason for him to be there, but you know, that's, we're going to have him on. So he starts talking about, oh, there's this and that. And then, and then all of a sudden, as he stops talking, like I ask another question, he does one of these. (laughs) So I kind of do one of these and I'm looking over at walkers. You're seeing this, right? Is this happening right now? (laughs) Okay, so about the other thing, uh, that had to have been very exciting for you. Oh, it was very exciting, and I look forward to doing it again. (laughs) Can you describe what's happening, Rhett, for those just listening? (laughs) He's he's hugging himself, but it's more of a slap. It's a a rocker hug. Like a wham! Okay, so thanks for coming in. Uh, Again, if you want to check that out, go to uh, (laughs) imacrazyperson.com. and uh and learn more there thanks for coming in uh we'll go to break come back 
Oh, yeah, thanks for having us in. Yeah. You know that, uh, I don't know if you saw, I was doing a thing. <laughs> Oh, was oh, that right? Were you doing a thing? I uh, I didn't realize. Yeah, it's um, it's so that I can fill my chest with air. If I get a little bit of, I get nervous or or kind of anxious, I just give it one of these, and it rushes uh, air into my lungs, so then I can so that I can speak. Oh, okay, okay. Well, thanks for coming in. Lock and you know what it's door. like, right? When something like that happens, and then everybody's <laughs> when the guy leaves or whatever. Okay, that's um. Yeah, that's a crazy person that who should not be driving. I'm not sure. Hopefully there's a ride for, for that person, whoever it is. I had never seen anything like that in my life. Crazyperson.com is a great website. For yeah, you. I'm a crazyperson.com. <laughs> Jack enjoyed that, by the way. He's sitting back there smiling. You always appreciate the good off mic laugh. He's got some giggles back there. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. You talk about, I saw people talking about how Jamie McLennan should write a book, and he has actually. Mm -hmm. Um. What, best seat in the house is that what it was called something like that if you google jamie mclennan now it might be hard to find because i think as he had said it was for he was raising funds for a buddy of his who had mm. gotten sick or whatever but i if you can find it it's great i think his buddy passed away running yeah. a race a road race yeah out in the mountains yeah Florida. but he uh he did write a book and yeah 30 years of being around interesting characters because it's not the meek and quiet people that get into broadcasting or do this sort of things. No. It's the pinders of the world. It's the people that shave their head mm. into a mullet and do high kicks in a Fairmont hotel at 3 a.m. Those right. are the people that are drawn to this. And even weirder people, as we just have received And evidence. even weirder. And that's a little horrifying. Yeah. Have you ever done that, Ryan, whenever you had to do the power hug? <laughs> yeah. For the Pinder report, I always get Jack to take me down. Right, yeah, yeah. That's why we go to those single shots right. when I'm reading I'm the sponsors back. so Ryan can, can start giving one of these. Yeah. All right, buddies, that'll do it. Thanks for being a part of the show. Look forward to seeing uh, you, Retro, in Toronto tomorrow. 24 Three hours. Shows. Yeah, yeah right from the airport. I guess I'm driving. I can pick you up. We already got a ride. We're good. What the? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I'm teasing you. All right. <laughs> See you, buddies. Thanks for telling that story. He's gone. Appreciate man. you. It's terrible.